Hello and welcome back to my channel, Fanfic Fantasy. Join us as we delve into the realms of fanfiction and fantasy, bringing you the best stories and discussions. Today, we're kicking off the first part of our series, What If Issei Had Level Up System with Multiple Boosted Gears and Had Harim. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more content in the future. The author of this story is Seer King from Wattpad. All the relevant links are in the description. Feel free to say hello to the author on their profile. Now, let's dive into the fanfic. Let's go. Regular speech. Opai. Thoughts. Boost. Sacred Gear. Deed Reg Speech. Chapter 1. Boosted Gear and Gaming Gear. Hyoto Residence. Hyoto Issei considered himself to be a fairly normal high school student, albeit somewhat more perverted. He viewed the female form to be perfection incarnate, especially their Opai. That minor to him quirk aside, he was average. Average height, average grades, average fitness. Below average in attractiveness to girls because he was a pervert. But Issei considered himself very honest, so it didn't bother him. How did I get into this situation? Issei wondered as the knife-wielding man in a balaclava stalked towards him menacingly, his terrified parents off to one side. It had been an ordinary dinner for the Hyoto family. His father grumbling about how expensive everything was, his mother constantly nagging him to stop being perverted and him putting up with it. The next thing he knew, this wacko had stormed in and had forced them into the living room at knife point. That had been several hours ago and the man had become increasingly nervous, alternating between pacing around and shouting hysterically at his father and mother. About a minute ago, he had taken a call on his cell phone and gotten even more nervous, not to mention angry. You fuckers. He had yelled, purifiers my ass. I'll fucking murder you. After I slice up the family I'm with, their deaths are on your head. He had thrown his phone against the wall, smashing it to pieces, before taking his knife a bowie knife, Issei noted absently and starting towards him with a mad grin on his face. And now there dot 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 easy dot 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 Issei backed away from the maniac. I haven't done anything to you. You're here. The man replied hoarsely, that's all that matters. As Issei backed into the wall, the man lurched forwards, knife drawn back and ready to pierce him. Gah. The brown-haired boy yelped as he dodged to the side, the blade barely missing him and slamming into the wall. Landing in a sprawled heap, Issei scrambled to his feet and desperately wished that his neighbors would hear the commotion and call the police. Die, Brett. The man roared as he heaved his knife out of the wall and cut at Issei this time. Issei's desperate reaction to lean back saved his life again, but he was cut across his left cheek. He dot 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 he's seriously trying to kill me. Issei thought in a panic as the pain hit him, I I don't want to die yet. A voice sprung up in his mind then, female, powerful dot 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 and ancient. Then you shall not she said, take my gift, young one dot 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 take the gift of Gaia, mother of earth, and live. My right arm shone with blue light as something materialized around it. A gauntlet. It looked anomalous for a moment before settling in as what looked like a western knight's gauntlet. Why you dot 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 what the fuck are you? The man snarled as he started forwards. You're one of those freaks aren't ya? A sacred gear user. Issei would have replied, had everything not frozen and turned blue. Now what? He groaned. Then he jumped slightly as a window appeared in front of him. The Sacred Gear Gamer's Gear has now been activated. World Pause Activated. Running Startup Sequence. Loading Stats dot 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 done. Loading Levels dot 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 done. Loading Skills dot 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 done. Loading Titles dot 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 done. Do you wish to scan for other Sacred Gears? Why and? Issei stared at it for a moment in incomprehension. What the hell was a Sacred Gear? Why did he have one, let alone possibly two? Would they help him survive? Mind a whirl with questions, Issei shakily pressed the Y button. Searching, 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 dot 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 done. Long in a sacred gear detected. Left arm, boosted gear. Sentient existence confirmed within sacred gear. Established communications link. Y and Again, Issei stared at the screen in disbelief. There was a sentient creature inside his left arm. What the hell? There were so many things wrong with that fact that it made his head swim. But he persevered and pressed the Y key again. Establishing communications link dot 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 done. Sacred gear is unlocked. Gamer's gear, stage 1 form. Boosted gear, twice critical form. Skills unlocked. Gamer's mind LV max. Gamer's body LV max. Materialize sacred gear LV max. Boost. LV1. Lesser draconic charisma LV1. Issei's eyes crossed at the information overload he was getting here. He forced himself to calm down. He could read all of this later. 
For the moment, all he needed to know was how he could use what he had to beat this guy frozen and blue in front of him and survive. Reaching out, he looked for one that might be useful, deciding to see what the boosted gear was all about. Boosted gear, twice critical form. The Gauntlet of the Red Dragon Emperor. The Prison for D-Drag, the Welsh Dragon. The boosted gear grants its wielder incredible power, but can be overused, destroying the user's body from power overload. Grants the skill boost. When active, passively grants the skill lesser draconic charisma even when dematerialized. Twice critical form restricts the boost. Skill. C boost. Entry for further details. User is granted an armor value of 50 when the boosted gear is materialized. User is weak against anti-dragon magic and magic items. Holy shit. He quickly moved to check the boost. Skill. Boost. Active. Passive LV1.00. The special ability of the twice critical and boosted gear sacred gears. Although the first is seen as weak, it does not pay to underestimate its use. Doubles the STR, STA, DEX and MP of the user every 10 seconds. Current boost limit, 3 times. Restriction. Cannot boost more than twice in twice critical form. Duration of cumulative boosting, 3 minutes. Okay, this is all nice and everything. But how do I use the boosted gear? I muttered. This cued another screen to pop up. Summon your fighting spirit. Imagine calling forth a dragon and call out its name. That is only for the first time. Afterwards, you will be able to call it forth and dismiss it at will merely by calling its name. Well that's useful. Issei concentrated and instinctively thrust forth his left arm. Boosted gear. In a flash of red light, a gauntlet materialized on his left arm. It was red, with a single emerald green gem mounted above where his hand was. Set slightly above it was a smaller orange fiery jewel. On either side was a golden prong. Boost. You have been affected by the status effect boost. Your power has been doubled. World pause is being undone. Please prepare for imminent mortal combat. Oh crap. Issei muttered. He looked at the madman who had been trying to kill him. He was moving, albeit fractionally. The boy scowled. He who strikes first, wins. Issei roared. He was seriously pissed at this guy for terrorizing his family for the past several hours and for almost killing him just now. As he drew his left arm back, he absently noticed something floating above the man's head. Yoshimura Ryotaro, LV3, Purifier Outcast. Filing the tidbit away for later, Issei drove his fist forwards as the world paused whatever that meant. It surely couldn't mean what it sounded like. Could it? Ended. The armored fingerless gauntlet slamming into the center of the man's balaclava-clad face. G-O-H. The man screamed as he reeled back, dropping his knife as he clutched at the wreck of his nose. Audu Sam. Issei called. All right. The Salariman nodded. He joined his son in restraining the man as Issei's mother called the police. Issei quickly dismissed both of his sacred gears and hoped his parents wouldn't ask about them. When the police came and arrested the man, that subject did in fact come up. I could have sworn that I saw something glowing around Issei's arms. His father said with a frown. A common reaction to being in stressful situations. The police officer said soothingly, Your mind tricks you into seeing things that aren't there. Given that you were being held at knife point for several hours, it isn't surprising that it happened, sir. The elder Hayoto looked dubious, but nodded. Now, we'll need to take statements from you at some point. The officer said, How would two days from now be? I think my boss will let me off on that day. Issei's father replied, Is it necessary for my wife and son T get involved? I'd really rather they not have to get involved in this affair more than they already have. I completely understand your sentiments sir, but I am afraid that your wife will have to give a statement at least. The policeman said firmly, Your son does not as he is a minor. Speaking of whom, he should go to the hospital to have that cutscene too. That cued Issei's mother to start fussing over him and scolding him for being so reckless. He put up with it as he could see how worried she was. The rest of the night passed in a blur of the hospital, stinging stuff on his cut and a drive home before he passed out on his bed, exhausted. The next day, Issei's room. Issei lounged on his bed with a sigh. His parents had insisted that he take the next few days off school to recover from the attack and he was bored out of his mind. He had finished all of the erodes that his friends, Matsuda and Matohama, had lent him the previous day. Well, I guess I could work out how to use my other sacred gear and see what makes it tick. He thought as he looked at his right arm, considering the way that the boosted gear had been activated. He threw out his right arm and said, game on. As he thought it would, the gamer's gear appeared on his right arm. He took the time to look over it carefully and discovered an odd rectangle on the area where back of his hand was hidden. Gingerly, he pressed it, making a screen pop up. Greetings. This is a one-off tutorial on how to use the gamer's gear. To continue, please close this screen. Befuddled, Issei did so. 
Excellent. The gamer's gear is one of only two of its type in the world. One blue, one orange. One created by Gaia, the Tetanus of Earth, the other created by Tartarus, the Primordial of Darkness. The wielders of these sacred gears are bound to fight each other, so prepare yourself for that. Oi, the brown-haired boy Tsukomid. Moving on, the gamer's gear grants you several powerful abilities, two of which are called skills. Skills are repeated actions that have been codified and turned into abilities for you to use. This can be something as mundane as washing dishes to breathing fire. The first skill is gamer's mind. This allows you to remain calm and in control at all times. Bluntly put, you cannot be affected by fear, terror or insanity. The instant you feel these things, the skill will activate and calm you down. Next is the skill called Gamer's Body. This allows you to live your life like a video game. Unless a skill specifically lists it in its description, you cannot lose body parts. You have HP that represents your life, stat points that represent your physical and mental abilities, and sleeping in your bed allows you to restore your HP. The rest is fairly simple. From this point on, you can receive quests in order to gain EXP or experience points, which will allow you to level up. Fighting monsters, clearing dungeons and completing quests will allow you to level up faster than completing basic tasks. Your life is yours to live in, with this sacred gear, the sky is the limit. In order to view your status screen, merely say status aloud. The same applies for you to view your skills. Fare thee well. Han Ji Han, the original gamer. The boy sat back with a sigh as he digested everything he had learned. On one hand, this was really, really cool. On the other, he was fated to fight some unknown person with a matching orange gauntlet on his arm. This did not fill him with glee. He said with a sigh. Name, Hayoto Issei. Class, The Gamer. Level, 4. Next level, 900 EXP. Title, Opai Baka. HP, 200 over 200. MP, 25 over 25. STR, 12. Sta, 10. Dex, 14. INT, 9. Wise, 9. Luck, Attribute Points, 0. Y equals, 0. Special Status, Awaken Sekiryude Passive plus 10 STR. Sta, Dex per level, plus 50 HP and MP per level. Nemesis, Hack your Yuko Passive Your enemy is the White Dragon Emperor. Nemesis, Orange Gamer Your enemy is the wielder of the Orange Gamer's gear. Perks, Blessing of Gaia. Presence of the Red Dragon Emperor. Lesser Resilience. Flaws. Open Desires. Lust. Opai Baka. What the hell is with this shit? Issei roared. Seriously. His title was Opai Baka. He had two nemeses. What the hell was with his flaws? Just. Gamma. Gamer's mind activated. He instantly felt himself calming down. Who boy. So his skill could also prevent him from losing his temper. Nice to know. Now that he was calmer, he pressed his title, making a smaller screen pop up. Opai Baka, you are well known for your breast fetish and human girls who know of this will stay away from you because of it. You suffer a penalty of minus 50% to any relationship gains with human girls who know of your fetish and actions. Impossible to unequip until you lose the Opai Baka flaw. I hate myself. Issei wailed as he punched his pillow. His mother had been right, damn it. Girls like gentlemen, like that bastard Kiba Yuyudo. He immediately resolved to change so he would become popular with girls. And so he would become the harem king. He blinked as another couple of windows popped up. Quest alert. Gentlemanly etiquette. Part 1. You, the Opai Baka, are determined to change your ways and lose the flaw that prevents you getting very far with girls. The first hurdle dot 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 no peeking. Do not go peeking at any female intentionally for a week once you return to school. Quest reward, plus 500 EXP, 2000 yen reduction in the effect of Opai Baka title and flaw. Quest failure, 250 EXP, stuck with the title and flaw until the next time you want to try the quest. Except, why, and, Issei actually felt pain, to not be able to peek at girls changing again. The horror, no, 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 for the sake of my dream, I must persevere. He told himself firmly and pressed the Y button before turning his attention to the next window. Quest alert, king of the harem. You wish to be a harem king. Attract, woo, seduce and gather girls for your harem. Note, long-term quest. Quest rewards, a harem, title, harem king. Quest failure, death. Accept, Y, N, death, from his goal. What the hell? Issei didn't know what to make of this until he recalled the old saying hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. As he couldn't and wouldn't press the N button, he pressed Y instead. Then he turned his attention back to his stats. The special statuses were all fairly straightforward. He had the boosted gear, so he was the Sekiryude. Simple as that, thus he had his enemy, the White Dragon Emperor. Just as obviously, as he had Gaia's gamer's gear, his enemy was the one who wielded Tartarus gamer's gear. What was really intriguing him was the perks and flaws section. 
Gaia's Blessing Passive The Titan Goddess of the Earth, Gaia, favors you, granting you the gamer's gear. You also have a marked affinity for the Earth, leading to a 15% power increase when using Earth magic. This perk cannot be lost. Presence of the Red Dragon Emperor Passive As the host of Deedrag, the Welsh Dragon, you can occasionally call upon his presence, usually after you become stronger or the boosted gear evolves. Allows you to communicate with the Red Dragon Emperor in your dreams. Also grants you a 50% EXP boost to any draconic skill. This perk cannot be lost. Lesser Resilience Passive Having been beaten on a regular basis, you have developed a resistance to it. You reduce any damage from a physical impact made by a blunt weapon wielded with less than STR 30 by half. This perk can be lost by not getting struck for 7 days in a row. Issei was duly impressed with the three, although he felt phantom aches when he read lesser resilience. Oh, those kendo girls could seriously swing some mean bakken. The flaws were Illuminating Open desires, lust passive your lust is unrestricted and runs rampant. 60% chance of acting lewd around a female, regardless of whether they and you are in public or not. This flaw can be lost by gaining control over your carnal desires. Opai Baka Passive You have a breast fetish of massive proportions, well known to everyone who knows you. Saddles you with the title Opai Baka. This flaw can be lost by restraining your desires. Yes, he was indeed a creature who acted on his desires. Hopefully, he could get rid of these flaws soon. Gathering a harem required some sacrifices. Nisei. His mother called from the kitchen. Coming. He called back. Dismissing the gamer's gear. He padded down to the kitchen where his mother was working on lunch. Ah, Issei. She said with a smile. Do you think you could go to the store and pick up a few things for dinner? Quest alert. Go for shopping. Your mother has requested that you go and pick up some items at the local shop. Quest reward. Plus 50 EXP. 1000 yen plus 100 reputation with your mother. Quest failure, 10 XP. Accept. Why? N. This looks like a reasonably easy quest to perform. Issei considered, easy enough to get my feet wet so to speak. He hit the Y key as he replied, Okay, Kasan. Do you have a list? After being handed a list and some money for his wallet, he headed out to do some shopping. As he walked, he ruefully rubbed the bandage over the cut on his cheek. He had been told rather apologetically that it would leave a slight scar, but he didn't mind. He thought that a scar would look pretty badass on his face anyway. As he walked, he decided to have a look at his skills. He had looked at Boost yesterday, and he already knew what Gamer's mind and Gamer's body did, so that just left Lesser Draconic Charisma. Lesser Draconic Charisma Passive LV1.00 Dragons are massive creatures, able to do a great many things, one of them being transformation into other beings. But regardless of what form they take, all dragons have a natural air of charisma about them that draws people to them. As someone who bears a dragon-type sacred gear, you have inherited a small portion of this charisma. Grants you the charisma stat once this entry has been read. Automatically adds 5 charisma each level. As one who bears the boosted gear, you gain a 50% EXP boost with this skill as this is a draconic skill. Issei wasn't impressed with his charisma stat dot 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 it was a 1. Seriously dot 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 how could someone have a cha rating of 1? What was he, a caterpillar or something? Sighing. He went into the store and set about gathering everything his mother wanted. Erg dot 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 miso soup is on the menu again. After paying for the food, Issei headed back home, but was concerned when he saw a police car outside his house. Entering again, he was suddenly engulfed by his worried mother. Issei, oh, thank Kami that you're okay, she said. Hair dot 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 okay why dot 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 what's going on? He asked in confusion. I am Inspector Fujiwara. A man in a trench coat said as he followed Issei's mother into the hallway and flashed his badge. I am here to inform you that the man who assaulted you was found dead in his cell shortly after noon today. The murder is suspected. Well it wasn't me. Issei said shortly, calming his mother down after a moment. We know, Hayoto-kun. The man said with a nod, I am here to urge you to be careful, however. Whoever killed him removed his hands, feet, teeth and eyes. We are conducting a DNA test to determine who he is, but that might take some time. You may be a target of whoever silenced him. Well, hell, was all Issei could say. Let's go. Regular speech. Alpai. Thoughts. Boost. Sacred Gur. Deedrag speech. Chapter 2. Questing for Answers. After discovering that his erstwhile assailant had been murdered rather brutally, the shopping he had been sent out to get had fallen to the wayside until the inspector left. But Issei handed the bag of food over to his mother just after that. And sure enough. Quest complete. Go for shopping. You have successfully completed your mother's shopping. 
quest reward, plus 50 EXP, 1000 yen plus 100 reputation with your mother. It was rather odd to suddenly look inside his wallet and see that he had an extra 1000 yen note. Compared to the weirdness that had been inhabiting his life since the previous day, however, Issei was easily able to roll with it. The question was, what should he do about the attempted murderer getting murdered? Issei could easily imagine whoever had ordered the other man killed ordering Issei's death as well, which wasn't a pleasant thing to imagine. Just as he was thinking that, another blue screen popped up. Quest alert. Defense for the defenseless, dungeoneering for life. You are concerned that you are going to be attacked by whoever silenced your attacker from yesterday. Go conquer a dungeon to become stronger. Quest reward. Plus 400 EXP, 3000 yen random reward. Quest failure, plus 200 EXP. Except, why him? Issei just stared at the screen for a moment. Seriously, he's worried about his life being at risk, so the stupid system tells him to go and risk his life. Paradox much. With a sigh, he hit why there wasn't anything else he could do and you never know, he might actually survive if he did this. He'd better leave right now. Issei, want is ready. Correction, he'd leave as soon as he'd had lunch. Later, streets, Kuo Town. The instant he set foot outside his house, a blue path appeared on the ground, leading away who knows where. Judging by the lack of a panic, Issei guessed that he was the only one who could see it. Well, what's one more weird thing today? He thought philosophically as he trudged along. He had been walking for the least 15 minutes and he was hoping that the dungeon wasn't too far away. Just a minute or two ago, he had received a notification that his effort had granted him an extra point of stall. Issei paused as the blue path veered off into a wall, for some strange reason. He inspected it and noticed that a blue square was on the wall, so he stepped up to examine it. Warning, you are about to enter the dungeon nest of the Ratlord LV4. Once entered, you must clear the dungeon in order to leave. Do you wish to enter? Why, in? Rats, Issei said with a grimace. He didn't like the little buggers, but hey, beggars can't be choosers. He hit the Y button. Almost at once, the box vanished, along with a doorway-shaped segment of the wall it had been on, revealing steps leading down into the darkness. Eerie, Issei whispered, before squaring his shoulders and walking down the stairs. Fortunately for him, as he walked, fiery torches lit the stairway every few meters. Behind him, Issei heard the sound of stone grinding as the entrance was sealed behind him. At length, he reached the bottom of the stairs, in a circular room made of roughly hewn stone. Lying in the center was a skeletal body wearing rags, slumped over a wooden chest. Ah, uh, starter kit. The Sekiryude nodded. Standard fare for early parts of most RPG games these days was to give the main character basic weapons if they were unarmed or basic armor if they were armed. He wasn't planning on using the boosted gear until the dungeon boss as he didn't really know what would happen once the he used up the time limit on the consecutive boosts. No, it was best to use it as a trump card for the moment dot 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 or at least until he have evolved it from being a twice critical. Walking over to the skeleton, Issei clapped his hand before offering a prayer to the skeleton before gently removing it from the chest and opening it up. Inside was a single bronze sword, complete with a leather sheath. Bronze? Really? Issei Tsukomid. As he reluctantly picked it up, a message appeared. You have acquired bronze short sword. Do you wish to equip this item? Y and Hitting the Y button, Issei blinked when the blade seemed to teleport into his right hand. He wondered if there was any way to view its stats. For information on this weapon, please open the equipment menu. Bemused, he did so. Right hand, bronze short sword. Left hand, empty. Head, empty. Body layer 1, ordinary red t-shirt. Body layer 2, Kuo Academy uniform. Arms, empty. Legs, Kuo Academy trousers. Feet, white running shoes. Air dot 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 oops dot 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 he said, looking down at his clothes. He'd accidentally worn his school outfit today. Force of habit, he supposed. Issei dismissed that and touched the only weapon he was equipped with. Bronze short sword. A short sword forged from bronze, it bears no maker's mark and is of average quality. It seems to be taken directly from the bronze age. Short sword. Slashing damage, S plus 10. Piercing damage, S plus 5. So basically, it was an ordinary starter weapon. Other than the fact it was from about 700 BC. Swinging it experimentally, Issei was surprised that it wasn't heavy, considering it was a western-style sword. Shrugging, he noticed that a door had appeared opposite the staircase dot 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 with another blue box floating in front of it. Nest of the Ratlord number 1. In order to confront the dungeon boss, you must defeat all of his minions and pull two levers that open the way to his chamber. Okay dot 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 that sounded relatively easy. He cautiously entered the main part of the dungeon and was immediately confronted by one of the enemies. It was a rat the size of a ten-year-old child, standing upright on its rear legs. It wore rags and had a club made of wood in one hand. 
Ratman Slave LV-3, Scumbitter. It shrieked in fury as it spotted him and charged forwards with its weapon raised to strike. Prep, Issei dodged to the side to avoid the strike of the club, then struck out with his own weapon, the blade severing the demi-human's tail in a spurt of blood, eliciting yet another shriek, this time of pain, from the Ratman. It whirled at him, a mix of pain, fear and rage in its eyes as it attacked him once again. Issei smacked the club away and ran the Ratman through its chest with his sword. The thing choked, shuddered, then died. You have defeated a Ratman slave. You earn 50 EXP. Do you wish to loot the body? Why? And hitting Y. Issei watched as a list was made on a blue screen in front of him. Filthy robe X1. Filthy loincloth X1. Splintered club X1. 200 yen. All of it completely useless barring the money. Looks like he couldn't depend on getting useful drops from the slaves. This prompted yet another screen to pop up. Do you wish to sell these items for 50? Y and hell yeah. Issei muttered and pressed the appropriate button. Ratman Minions dispatched, 1.30th. He wondered, as he continued on in, if it was his gamer's mind that was stopping him from freaking out over the fact that he had just taken his first life. Very likely, it was. Issei discovered, on his little sojourn through the rat nest, that the slave he had killed had been one of the better equipped members of the slaves. The majority of the rest were clad in loincloths and wielded flint knives for crying out loud. Those he kept, mostly because he liked the look of them. Here, a slave shrieked as it charged him, knife bared, only to have its head separated from its shoulders by a well-placed strike of Issei's blade. Shut up, damn it. Issei spat. You have slain a Ratman slave. You receive 50 EXP. Ratman minions dispatched, 1730th. You have leveled up. LV4 LV5. You have 5 attribute points to spend. You have sold your drops for 500. Nice. Issei grinned. He opened his menu and spent the points. Usually, he would save them, but he was a bit too weak to hoard points like that. Choosing to up his STR and dex by 3 and 2 respectively, he immediately felt stronger once he closed the window. He spotted a lever ahead of him, a crude one made of wood and wrapped in rags. Very gingerly, he pulled it down until it clicked into place and retracted into the wall. That's one down. The Sekiryude muttered as he turned and walked back the way he had come. The nest would be better described as a warren, one with numerous corridors leading to sub-chambers dug through stone and rock. He had been scratching an X next to the tunnels he had gone down because there were so damn many of them. Moving up the main passage, he made a mark on one side of another side junction before entering it. Eventually, he came to a room which had an altogether different breed of enemies for him. Unlike the Ratman slaves, these were not weedy specimens, but healthy and muscled. They wore armor, albeit not a lot of it, over their smocks, copper spalders, vambraces, leather brigandines and the occasional open helm. They carried copper swords as well. Clanret LV4. She is the if. This would be harder than the 17 slaves he had killed. With a shriek of anger, one clanret spotted him, drawing the attention of the other four present. They rushed him en masse, brandishing their swords threateningly. Issei backed up into the passage, limiting the clanrats to come at him two at a time. It wasn't easy as he had to parry and block more than attack, but he cut through them nonetheless. In about ten minutes, five ratman corpses lay at his feet as he stood panting above them. You have slain X5 clan rats. You are in 300 EXP. Ratman minions defeated, 2230th. Do you wish to loot the bodies? Y and hitting the Y button, Issei grinned as the list grew. Dirty hemp smock X5. Copper short sword X5. Copper spalders X5. Copper Vambraces X5. Leather Brigandine X5. 2000. Skill Book Unknown Skill. Marking everything but the smocks to be kept, he sold the hemp clothing for 60 yen. Then he wondered where the items he'd chosen to keep had gone, prompting a window popping up informing him of his inventory. Opening it, he pulled out the skill book, which opened yet another window. You have acquired the basic swordsmanship skill book. Do you wish to learn this skill? Why? It looks like a good skill. Issei commented, meh. Why not? After hitting the Y button, Issei was shocked when the book dissolved into shards of blue light. He was even more shocked to see them fly and disappear into his chest. You have learned the skill basic swordsmanship. Basic swordsmanship passive LV1.00. Throughout the entirety of the world, the one weapon that is used the most often, barring the human body itself, is the sword. No matter what kind of sword it is, from rapiers to broadswords, from Dao to Katana, the sword has rightly earned its name as the queen of weapons throughout humanity's long and bloody history. Basic swordsmanship is, as the title suggests, very basic thrusts and cuts. Grants the user the ability to carry a sword with ease. Passively grants the user plus one to slashing attacks. Passively grants the user plus one to piercing attacks. Okay dot 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 this is cool. 
Issei said and hefted his bronze sword in his hand. It had felt somewhat awkward up until a moment ago, but it now felt dot 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 right dot 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 I in his hand, for lack of a better term. Shrugging, the Sekiryude wandered out of the room after searching it for anything useful. Seriously, he was beginning to think he'd get nothing out of this place. The Ratmen were the epitome of low-level trash mobs, with subpar drops to top it off. Yeah, he needed the experience points, but he also needed better equipment. The next couple of rooms he searched were empty of both enemies and anything useful, which actually wasn't much of a surprise to him. There were only eight enemies left, not counting the boss. They'd be near the other lever, if he guessed correctly. The only problem was finding it. Ah, there you are. Issei smirked as he entered the second from last room and saw the eight remaining enemies. Six of them were clan rats, armed in the same way as the last lot but it was the other two that gave him pause. They were half again as big as the clan rats and looked twice as mean. Black fur covered them and long sinuous tails lashed behind them. The armor they wore was made of what looked like iron and covered the same areas protected by the clan rat's armor. Clasped in their hands were, for them, halberds. For a human, they'd be axes. Storm vermin LV5. Black rat. This dot 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 WS ain't going to be easy. Those two were the same level as he was and had better equipment than he did. Those halberds were made of iron as well. Issei may not be the best student at history, but he had read a manga called Red River, which showed exactly what happened when bronze tried to compete with iron. Bronze lost in the long run. Kill kill. One storm vermin squeaked as it spotted him. Much to Issei's surprise, only the clan rats attacked. The larger ratmen stayed back, guarding the lever. Issei hacked and slashed his way through the clan rats with greater ease than before. His height and reach advantage were complemented by his new basic swordsmanship skill. The clan rats, despite their numbers, couldn't even touch him, although they did cut his shirt and trousers more than once. Only once the last clan rat expired did the storm vermin move. Wielding their iron halberds, they stalked towards Issei with slow deliberate steps designed to intimidate. Issei noticed that they were angling to catch him in a pincer move, which was not something he was eager to let happen. He whispered and readied himself. Die, man thing. The one to his right squealed and charged, as the one to his left charged as well, albeit silently. Quickly, Issei reached into the inventory screen and pulled out a copper short sword that he had taken from a defeated clan rat. He then parried both attacking weapons with his own. The copper sword bent from the impact, as expected, but it was enough to throw the storm vermin off guard. He kicked the left side one in the face before turning back to the right hand ratman and shoving his bronze sword into its throat. The storm vermin choked and died. Returning his attention to the last remaining Ratman minion, Issei was surprised to see it running at him, a crazed look in its eyes. He blocked another swipe of its iron halberd with the copper sword. This proved too much for the blade, as it snapped in two. Issei didn't hesitate to throw the handle and what little remained of the blade still attached to it in the face of the storm vermin, making it flinch long enough for him to repeat the death of its companion. You have slain X6 clan rats. You earn 360 EXP. You have slain X2 storm vermin. You are in 240 EXP. Do you wish to loot the bodies? Y N. Hitting the Y button, Issei grinned as the loot piled up. Dirty hemp smock X6. Copper short sword X6. Copper spalders X6. Copper vambraces X6. Leather brigandine X6. Dirty leather tunic X2. Pig iron spalders X2. Pig iron vambraces X2. Crude pig iron cuirass X2. Storm vermin pig iron halberd X2. 4,000 yen. Selling the hemp smocks and leather tunics for a profit of 102 yen the rest went to his inventory. Issei then strode up to the lever and pulled it down. Ratman minions dispatched, 30 over 30. Right? He muttered as the lever clicked and was then retracted into the wall, now to find the boss room. It wasn't that hard at all. The pair of stupidly large doors open at the end of the corridor that had swung open were a dead giveaway. Issei cautiously entered the room. It was full of straw dummies, human in shape, but with extra additions. Some had black bat-like wings on the back, while others had feathered wings of the feathered variety, colored both black and white. Devil. Fallen angel. Angel. A snickering voice came from a shadowed area at the far side of the room. Issei peered forwards and managed to make out a figure sitting in a throne-like seat. These things. Issei jerked his head at the dummies. Are you telling me these guys exist? Yes yes, man thing. The figure replied with another snicker, devil things troublesome, saving them for last, fallen things immoral and hide well, they'll be second last, angel things weakest of all, destroy the church things and they're helpless, while hearing your plans is nice and all, we'd better get to the part where I kick your ass, Issei said challengingly, the figure roared in laughter, kekakakakakak, foolish man thing, 
You cannot defeat me. Defeat Byral Warfang. Yes, yes. I shall enjoy your cries of pain. Bylan stood up and strode forward into the light, allowing Issei to gauge his enemy. Standing a head above even the Stormvermin, Byral Warfang cast an imposing figure for something that didn't even come up to Issei's chin. He wore a conical helm over his head, with a sheet of chain mail going down the back to protect his neck. His chest was protected by a steel cuirass, with pauldrons on his shoulders and a fall going around his waist. Over his shoulders, a ragged brown cape fluttered. With a sneer, the dungeon boss drew the sword at its hip. One side of it was straight, while the other half was curved like the waves. All of its equipment was steel, which meant trouble for Issei. Viral Warfing LV-6 Lesser Ratman Warlord Great. Just great. Not only did the bastard have better equipment than he did, it was also a level higher than him. Perfect. Issei readied his bronze sword and withdrew a copper sword from his inventory as well. He knew that if iron was a bad matchup for his bronze and copper weapons, then steel was even worse for him. That sword would cut through them like a hot knife through butter. Well then, I'll just have to avoid hitting his blade or armor. Issei thought as he shifted his grip on his weapons, this fight can't last long. With a shrieking warcry, Byral leapt forwards, sword raised to strike. Issei sidestepped to the left and struck out with his blades, cutting a line across Byral's arm. The warlord shrieked again and lashed out with his sword, forcing Issei to block with his copper blade. The steel ripped a chunk out of the blade, but it held dot 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 for now. Weak weak. The rat cackled. The Sekiryude responded by kicking the rat where no man wishes to be kicked, making the ratman's already squeaky voice go up another octave. Issei would be surprised if that was the right note to shatter glass. He took the opportunity to try and cut the bastard's sword arm off, but the little git actually managed to block his bronze sword with his steel sword. With a curse, Issei then stabbed awkwardly with his copper sword, managing to bury the blade into its leg. Sadly, the weapon snapped in half, leaving most of the blade embedded in the warlord's leg. Viral left leg crippled. Minus 50% mobility. Viral is suffering from the bleeding status. Hop along, rat boy. Issei taunted the ratman as he fell back out of sword range, discarded his sword hilt and pulled another copper sword from his inventory. You dare mock me. Viral snarled, you pay, man thing. He reached into a pouch at his waist, pulled out a small bottle and ripped the cap off. Issei wrinkled his nose at the foul smell that was emanating from the container. Witch brew, drinking this will make me lose my mind dot 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 but I will kill you. The warlord snarled before downing the container in one swallow. The effect was immediate. The eyes of the warlord turned bright red and his muscle bulged out. Oh hell, Issei muttered. Viral has been affected by the status effects fury and berserk. I figured that much out for myself. Issei Tsukomied automatically. When the Ratman Warlord roared, he decided that it was time to get serious. Boosted gear. Issei called out. On his command, the red gauntlet appeared on his left arm in a flash of red light. Boost. You have been affected by the boost. Status effect. Your power has been doubled. Right as it appeared, Bylan charged at Issei and slashed down with his blade. Issei deflected it with a backhanded swipe of his armored hand and countered with a swipe with his bronze sword that clanged off the helmet that the Ratman wore, which only seemed to piss it off even more. Viral snarled and howled incomprehensively as he lashed out again and again with his sword, forcing Issei to block more with his own weapons and gauntlet. Boost. You have been affected by the boost. Status effect. Your power has been doubled. Boost. Limit reached. Starting countdown. 3. 259. 258. Craptastic. I'd better finish this now, he thought. The problem was that the berserk Byral wasn't giving him much room to maneuver. He could barely attack without having to dodge that damned sword or the warlord's ravening maw. Issei finally lured the warlord into a trap by letting him bit his armored hand then stabbing him in the throat while he was trying to bite through Issei's sacred gear. Man dot 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 thing dot 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 you dot dot dot. Byral choked out before slumping to the floor, dead. Thank God. Issei hastily disengaged the boosted gear before the timer could hit zero. You have defeated Byral Warfang. You receive 600 EXP. Please select your drop from the boss. Rapscallion Wave Blade. Helm of the Corsair. Mantle of the Rat Horde. Issei looked at the selection with worried look on his face. His first instinct was to grab the sword, but... He reached out and touched the question mark next to the sword. Rapscallion Wave Blade. This sword was the personal weapon of Byral Warfang. It was made by a captured dwarven smith, but from mediocre materials and with substandard equipment. Nevertheless, it is still a cut above the rest. Standard sword for ratman. Short sword human. Slashing attacks, S plus 20. Piercing attacks, S plus 18. Nice dot 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 let's see here. He moved on to the next one. 
a helmet worn by sea raiders. It offers protection to the head, but leaves the nose and mouth area exposed. This helmet has been modified for extra protection for the eyes, at the cost of reducing visibility. Grants an armor rating of 15 to all covered locations and reduces visibility by 30%. Nah, not my style. Next. This ragged red cape is the indication of the rank of captain or above in the rat hordes. To see an enemy wearing it makes other ratmen feel fear, knowing that the wearer has bested one of the more powerful members of their race. Non-ratmen races wearing this cloak cause in ratmen who are not captain rank or above. So the sword it is. Issei concluded. He selected the sword and the rest of the equipment, plus Byral's body, vanished. As he placed the sword into his inventory, a couple of screens popped up after that. Congratulations. As a result of repeated actions, you have learned the skill. Short swords are typically less than 60 centimeters long. Developed before forging techniques could be made to create longer weapons of sufficient strength to be used in battle. Famous examples include the Scottish Dirk, the Roman Gladius, the Greek Ziphos, the Italian Renaissance Cinquidia, and the Cutlass. Conventional thinking would put the short sword at a disadvantage compared to longer blades, but a true master can still cause quite a bit of trouble with one. While wielding a, you are granted an additional plus one to all damage dealt. Additionally, you have a higher chance of learning skills to do with short swords. Makes sense. I have been doing nothing but use these things all this time. Issei noted, as a result of repeated actions, you have learned the skill. <laughs> Parrying is when you redirect or deflect an opponent's attack. In order to accomplish a classic parry, you must strike an attacking opponent's blade at the base, just above the cross guard and direct the blade away from you. Most people would refer to any kind of deflection during swordplay as a parry, which is true enough. However, you will receive extra EXP to any skill or skill you possess should you accomplish this. 20% chance to parry an opponent's attack. 5% chance of performing a classic parry. 5 MP per use. Huh, I guess I was batting that nut jobs attacks away quite a bit. The secker you'd aim used. Well, better have a look around here before heading. He was cut off by the door slamming shut with a bang. Out. He finished lamely, well hell. Now I have to find another way out of here. Jeez. It's just one thing after another with this business. By and large, the room was barren of any traces of another exit. The only things remotely interesting were the mock-ups of the three supernatural races. It was when Issei investigated Byral's throne that he discovered something interesting. Next to it was a table with a map spread over it, one that showed a familiar town. This is... Kyo, Issei whispered. His eyes danced over the paper, quickly finding where he thought the ratman nest he was currently in was located. It bore an odd mark, a rat's head. Scanning the map, he saw several other similar symbols dotted all over Kyo. Deciding he'd need it later, Issei rolled the map up and stored it in his inventory before he examined the throne. It was a ramshackle affair, made of bits of wood knocked together with nails and covered with a moldy red piece of velvet. Next to it was a lever. Not having any other options, Issei pulled it. With a great groan of turning gears, the wall behind the throne collapsed into the ground, revealing a dark passage. Here we go again. Issei sighed. Having the presence of mind to grab a torch from one of the wall mountings, the brown-haired boy cautiously entered the dark passageway, only for the door to slam shut behind him, as he expected it to. Yep, definitely RPG mechanics going on here. Issei muttered. The passage wasn't very long, leading to a largish room with a desk, chair and light above it. On top of the desk was a single piece of paper. Curious, Issei investigated it. To Division Head, Project Rat King. Central Command has given permission for you to carry out your plan. The bioengineered race you created, hashtag 456B, are weak, but pliable and should be useful for human wave tactics due to their large breeding pools and rapid maturation. You are ordered to disperse the current specimens across several layers in Kyo City so they can amass a large host each. Once this has been achieved, you shall receive further orders. For the purity of our species and our souls. What the hell is going on here? Issei muttered. This certainly seemed like it came from the purifiers, to judge by that last line. They were breeding an army of those ratmen. Why? I need to think about this. With that muttered sentence, Issei placed the memo into his inventory and looked around for an exit. A set of concrete stairs looked like a likely bet. As he headed up the stairs, the Sekiryude had to wonder what his life would turn into as he became more powerful. He grinned. I can't wait to find out. Reaching a door with an empty mounting on the wall next to it, Issei slid the torch into it and twisted the handle on the door to open it. The daylight that shone through when the door creaked open was blinding after his time in the poorly lit lair of the Ratman. A pleasant little jingle of music played as a screen appeared in front of him. 
It took him a moment to make it out due to his eyes being half blind in their adjusting state. The defense for the defenseless, dungeoneering for life. You have successfully conquered your first dungeon. Quest rewards, plus 400 EXP, 3000 yen skill book. You have leveled up. LV5 LV6. You have 5 attribute points to spend. Has leveled up. Has leveled up. Few dot 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 that's cool. Issei said as he looked around. He was in an abandoned warehouse of some sort. He returned his attention forwards as yet another window popped up. The rat catcher, you have discovered that the mysterious purifier organization has created an army of the demi-human ratmen through some unknown process. However they were created, they cannot be up to any good. Hunt down and conquer every ratman den, nest and lair in Kyo City. Bonus, gather information about Project Rat King as you conquer each den. Quest reward, plus 1000 EXP, plus 8000 yen plus 2 AP, random piece of equipment, title, rat catcher. Bonus reward, skill book. Quest failure, death. Accept, Y, N. Great, another quest I could die performing. Issei muttered, and, Joy, I can't refuse it. I'm not doing it today though. With that, he hit the Y button and started heading home. Let's go. Regular speech. Opai. Thoughts. Sacred Gur. Deedrag speech. Chapter 3. Ratted out. That night. Entrance to the Ratman Den. Ria's Gremory wrinkled her nose as she stared at the opening in the wall that was hidden by a basic glamour. She and the rest of her peerage were clustered around the doorway. Kaniko-chan, can you sense anything in there? She asked her. The reincarnated Nekamata paused for a moment before shaking her head. Nothing alive. She said bluntly. This made the Gremory heiress frown. She had detected unusual magical emanations coming from this location earlier on today, and she'd come here hoping to find a new sacred gear wielder or something. Not a doorway that shouldn't be there. Kiba, take the lead. She directed her. Akino and I will follow, with Kaniko taking the rear. Hi, Bachu. The blonde boy nodded. He concentrated and a demonic sword erupted from the ground in front of him. He drew it and led the way through the doorway. The group of devils assembled at the bottom of the stairs and stared silently at the skeleton draped over the chest in horror. There are teeth marks on the bones. Kiba said in a subdued voice, something dot 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 ate this man alive. Such a thing. Ria shook her head with a shudder, be careful. Whoever or whatever did this may still be around. As they started to explore the underground maze, it was with shock that they discovered the corpse of the first ratman not far away from the entry area. Kiba, despite his distaste for the smell of the thing, examined the body. No supernatural race that I've ever seen. He said with a frown, someone killed this dot 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 thing dot 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 with a rather clumsy sword thrust to the chest. After cutting off its tail, the further in they went, the more corpses they found. Kiba looked puzzled at one point, when they discovered eight ratmen slain in close proximity to one another. Whoever did this got verifiably better since the last lot. He said with a frown, before this group, the sword play, judging by the cuts and other wounds, shows that it was an amateur who killed them. This group were killed by someone who was familiar and comfortable with the sword. Still not very skilled, but marginally more so than before who could change from unskilled to marginally skilled between groups. Akina wondered. A robot. Kaniko deadpanned. Ria's chuckled as she beckoned her group onwards. Finally, the only area they hadn't checked yet was hidden behind a set of heavy stone doors. Kaniko-chan, if you would. Ria's directed her. The petite girl walked forward and, quite nonchalantly, kicked the doors in, the great stone blocks crumbling down, forming a no less impassable barrier in the form of a heap. Akino used her magic to remove the stone so they could advance into the room. Inside, the corpse of the largest ratman the group had found yet lay in the middle of the room, the remains of half a copper sword still embedded in its leg. Copper? Really? Kiba shook his head in disbelief. Who on earth uses copper for swords anymore? Is it magical? Akino asked. Nope. Just an ordinary copper sword. Kiba replied, utterly mystified, aside from the fact someone, probably this creature here, Hit it hard enough to break it in two. But you, these mannequins. Kaniko pointed at the foe fallen. Angels and devils scattered around the room. Yes dot 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 this is. Unusual. The crimson haired ruined princess nodded slowly. Akino, take this. Ratman, I suppose we should call it dot 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 to Beelzebub Sama's local research department drop off center. The fact that these things were able to set up a nest in my territory without us catching so much as a hint of it is worrisome. Almost as worrisome as someone taking it upon themselves to massacre them in their own nest. She added silently, as Akino vanished in a magic circle. Taking the corpse away with her, Ria's examined the mannequins with a frown. They were disgusting, filthy mockeries of the real McCoy that gave her chills up her spine for some reason. When Akino reappeared, Ria's looked around at her beloved peerage with a smile. 
Well, that's everything we needed to do here, she said. Let's leave this place and seal up the entrance. Riaz, should we keep an eye out for the magic user who did dot 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 this? Akino asked, gesturing at the slaughtered ratmen as they walked back out of the large chamber. Yes, I want to have a word with them about exactly what these things are doing in my territory, and why they didn't contact me before entering my territory to deal with them. The Gremory heiress answered with a hint of irritation in her voice. Huel was her territory, her responsibility. Whoever had killed these ratmen had snuck in and acted as they pleased without so much as a by your leave. Riaz couldn't allow anyone, Yakai, devil or otherwise, to flaunt her authority like this. I, the next day, with Issei, with a yawn, Issei padded down the stairs of his family home. He was still tired after he took down that ratman den the previous day, even although he had gotten plenty of sleep. Odd, floating above his bed had been a screen telling him that his HP and MP had been restored for sleeping in a proper bed which was useful information. Morning, Kasin. He greeted his mother as he entered the kitchen. Good morning, Issei. His mother replied as she dished up breakfast. Where's Adu-san? He asked as he sat down at his seat. He got called into work early. His mother replied with a sigh. Apparently there's a flu going around and a lot of people in his office have caught it, so he's going to be working overtime until everyone's well again. Poor dad, Issei commented as he tucked in. As he ate, Issei snuck a look at the words floating over his mother's head. Hyoto Yukariko LV10. So his mother was four levels higher than he was. Considering she was an adult, that seemed a bit low. But then again, she didn't kill monsters for large wax of EXP, so maybe it was average. Whatever the case may be, he had to get stronger in order to better protect his family from the purifiers. Whoever they were. The fact that he was legitimately under threat of being murdered by a secret organization that seemed to have a chip on their shoulders regarding supernaturals was like something out of a manga. Issei wished it wasn't the case, but what could he do? After finishing his breakfast, Issei headed back up to his room and opened his status screen. Name, Hyoto Issei. Class, The Gamer. Level, 6. Next level, 2000 EXP. Title, Apai Baka. HP, 300 over 300. MP, 125 over 125. STR, 35. STA, 31. DAX, 36. INT, 9. WISE, 9. LUCK, CHA, 11. ATTRIBUTE POINTS, 5. Y equals, 14712. Issei blinked at the state of his STR, STA and DAX, but then remembered his trait as him, which added 10 points to those three stats every time he leveled up and he had leveled up twice yesterday. Accounted for the increase in his cha score for similar reasons. Deciding that he could afford to spend the points on his mental stats now, he put two into INT, two into Ys, and then tried to put the last point into cha, which he presumed stood for charisma, but a screen popped up when he tried. Very irritating. He flipped a coin and put the last point into Ys. Issei then checked the two skills that leveled up yesterday, and... LV2, 31, 1 XP. Dragons are massive creatures, able to do a great many things, one of them being transformation into other beings. But regardless of what form they take, all dragons have a natural air of charisma about them that draws people to them. As someone who bears a dragon-type sacred gear, you have inherited a small portion of this charisma. Grants you the charisma stat once this entry has been read. Automatically adds 6 charisma each level. As one who bears that, you gain a 50% EXP boost with this skill as this is a skill. Throughout the entirety of the world, the one weapon that is used the most often, barring the human body itself, is the sword. No matter what kind of sword it is, from rapiers to broadswords, from Dao to Katana, the sword has rightly earned its name as the queen of weapons throughout humanity's long and bloody history. Basic swordsmanship is, as the title suggests, very basic thrusts and cuts. Grants the user the ability to carry a sword with ease. Passively grants the user plus two to attacks. Passively grants the user plus one to attacks. Not a large improvement, but still better than nothing. Reaching into his inventory, Issei pulled out the skill book he received for completing the main quest yesterday. Do you wish to learn this? Why and what the heck is mental mapping? Issei wondered. As he'd expected, a window popped up. Huh, sounds useful. He said with a shrug, let's go for it. Pressing the Y button, he saw the book dissolve into blue light, which flew into his chest. A moment later, a screen popped up. You have learned the skill. Mental mapping is a skill that allows the user to create a map in their mind of any location they enter. At low levels, it is restricted to buildings and dungeons, but once you reach higher levels, it can and will function in the outdoors as well. 
actively allows the creation of mental maps of locations. Passively increases Wise by 5. Costs 5 MP per minute to use. Passively allows the user to recall any map created in exacting detail. Cool. Issei said before he noticed another window appear. <coughs> YM. The Sekiryude cocked one eyebrow. It could do that. If it could, then it'd save him an awful lot of time walking all over places he already knew like the back of his hand to get a mental map. He hit Y at once. Working. 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 Done. Nap. Hyoto Residence. Fully complete. Nap. Kuo Academy. 45% complete. Nap. Kuo Academy Kendo Club Hall. 60% complete. Nap. Kuo City Indoor Shopping Arcade. 70% complete. Nap. Matohama Residence. Fully complete. Nap. Matsuda Residence. Fully complete. Nap. Den of the Rat Lord. Fully complete. You gain 50 EXP per completed map. Nice. Issa grinned. An extra 200 EXP wasn't something to sneeze at. Question was, what to do now? He had no idea. Check the map for the nearest rat den. Shrugging again, he reached into his still open inventory and pulled out the map of Kyo he had taken from the secret room at the back of the dungeon the previous day, and opened it out. It took Issa a moment to find the rough location of his house on the map. Okay, so my house is here. He muttered. The den was a 15 minute walk away. Dot 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 ah, this one over here. Hello, what's this then? Next to the rat's head symbol was a set of odd lines. Via. The Roman numerals for seven. He said in bafflement. He only knew about that because he had played Final Fantasy V a few times. Who was it that said that playing video games never taught you anything again? Examining the other rat's heads, Issei noticed that they all had numerals of some sort next to them, none of which were higher than seven. A hint to go after the nests in descending numerical order, perhaps. You gain plus one INT for correct deductive reasoning. Shush. Deciding that it was as good an idea as any to start off with, Issei searched and found the den with the number 6 next to it. It was, oddly enough, on the riverbank, near the bridge. Time to have a walk, he muttered. Issei got dressed, in casual clothes this time, although they honestly weren't too different from his school uniform. Black trousers, a red t-shirt, white running shoes and a white shirt over the top to finish the look. Kasen, and going out for a walk. He called as he came down the stairs. Another one. His mother asked as she came into the hallway, what's brought this on? I'm still a bit nervous dot 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 you know. After what happened, Issei replied awkwardly. It was true, up to a point anyway. His mother's eyes softened as she drew Issei into a gentle hug. Oh, now Issei, you should have told me you were feeling uneasy about this whole thing. I am sorry it happened but hopefully it'll never happen again. You gain plus 100 relationship with Hayato Yukariko. His mother sent him on his way with a wave and an admonishment to be back in time for lunch. As he closed the door behind him, Issei found himself confronted by a large screen. <coughs> den I. Den. Den I. Den I V. Den V. Den V I. No, this is convenient. Issei remarked as he hit the button for den number 6 and saw the blue path light up and head down the street. Walking along, Issei had to wonder what he would find at the rest of the dens. More powerful versions of the last opponents. Magic users. Giant rat monsters. He wasn't all that up on what ratman members were available in fantasy games beyond the low-level trash mobs. He'd have to do some research to combat that lack of knowledge. At length, he reached the riverbank, but frowned as the path still went on, under the bridge even. Issei trotted over to the concrete and found, as expected, a blue screen over a door-shaped section of concrete. He reached out and touched it, making it flare to life. You are about to enter the dungeon. Once you enter this dungeon, you must clear it before exiting. Do you wish to enter? Why? And Great, a rat beast this time. Issei grumbled. Kami help me. He pressed the Y button and the door vanished just like at the last place. What was different about this entrance was what lay on the other side of the door, a long pole descending down into the darkness. Seeing what he was supposed to do here, Issei sighed and did it. He jumped onto the pole and started to slide down it. It was only a couple of minutes later that he touched down on the ground, in a circular room built of stone, lit by braziers and with a single doorway leading on. Drawing the from his inventory, Issei advanced through the doorway, only to be confronted by a familiar sight. A skeleton leaning over a chest. Okay dot 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 let's see what we have here. He muttered as he opened the chest. Folded up neatly in the chest was a pile of red cloth. When Issei picked it up and unfolded it, the cloth was revealed to be a ragged hooded cloak, with a blank circular buckle at the throat. You have acquired the. Do you wish to equip this item? Why and... Hitting yes, he opened his equipment menu so he could get a description of the cloak. A cloak made from the woven hairs of several magical beasts that use chameleon-like abilities to hunt. 
It makes the wearer very hard to notice to mundane methods and even provides some degree of camouflage to supernatural detection methods. But it isn't absolute. Provides 5 armor to all covered locations. While the hood is up, grants the skills into the user. While the hood is up, the wearer's face is obscured into darkness. Combat impossible while concealed with this item. Phew. Useful. Issa whistled. He pulled the hood up and immediately noticed that his body seemed to be drained of color, to the point that he looked transparent. Moving through the next room, Issei spotted what had to be the largest mass of enemies he had ever seen. They were a bunch of rats the size of spaniels, with red eyes, frothing mouths and whip-like tails. At the back stood a ratman armed with a whip and a crude-looking dagger thrust into its belt. Giant Rat LV-5 Packmaster LV-5 Shit, there's over 20 of those rat dog things. Is a cursed. He reached into his inventory and took out his bronze sword. Against the sheer number of enemies he was facing, he couldn't just charge in and cut them to pieces as he would prefer to do, as one thing rats and ratmen had very commonly was a debuff effect attached to their fangs or claws, usually poison. So then, he would have to be cunning. He observed the movements of the rat pack, which seemed to involve the dog-sized rat seething and running about within a certain area, which was about the length of the packmaster's whip. None of the rats seemed to want to get behind the packmaster either. If he could sneak around, disengage his camouflage, kill the packmaster and then retreat, it could make the rats scatter and become easier targets. Alternatively, it could make them swarm him. But he didn't have a clue what else to do other than a frontal assault. So he went with his plan, but noted the need to develop long-range skills at some point. Carefully maneuvering himself as quietly as possible around the horde of rats, Issei barely managed to avoid standing on one rat's tail before finally getting to the back of the packmaster. Releasing a sigh of relief, he considered how best to do this before reaching up with his bronze sword and flicking the hood off his head. Almost immediately, a rat dog spotted him and opened its mouth to shriek, but Issei cut the head off the packmaster with one clean cut of his steel sword before it could so much as twitch. The effect on the pack was rather interesting. They scattered and fled into cracks in the wall that he didn't think rats of their size should be able to squeeze through. You have slain a packmaster. You earn 75 EXP. By assassinating the packmaster, you have scattered a pack of giant rats. You earn 100 EXP. When the option whether or not to loot the body came up, Issei hit the Y key. Filthy robe X1. Ragged whip X1. Crude iron knife X1. 500 yen. He sold the whip and robe, but kept the dagger, as it was a damn better one than the flint crap he had in his inventory. Considering the fact that no special clearing conditions had appeared, Issei took it to mean that it was a very basic kill-the-boss type dungeon as he wandered down the corridor. Quite why this hadn't been the case for the last dungeon was a bit confusing, but he guessed it was generated at random by his ability. On his way down the corridor, Issei had to deal with two more packs of giant rats. The first he dealt with in a similar way to the initial pack and netting similar rewards. The second, however, was a pain in the backside. The ratman standing behind the pack had some kind of glowing crystal in place of one of its eyes and spotted him even with the hood of his cloak up. Man thing. Kill kill. It squeaked before lashing out with its whip, egging its charges on to attack Issei. Crap on a stick. Issei cursed as he flipped his hood down and readied his swords as the wave of dog-sized rats descended upon him. He bisected the first one to reach him before he had to leap back to avoid the ravening maw of another one. The next few minutes were tense as Issei cut a swath through the rats. Individually, they weren't close to being a match for him. As they came at him in a large mob, however, he had accumulated a small number of cuts and a bite mark, losing 50 HP altogether. Oh, he shouted in pain as yet another rat bit him on his right arm. Jeroff, minus 35 HP. Issei stabbed the rat with his bronze sword several times before it died and released his arm. He made short work of the remaining three giant rats before turning his attention to the packmaster, who backed off nervously, whip held at the ready. Die die. It shrieked before drawing the whip back in preparation to strike. Issei leapt in close and severed the hand holding the weapon, making the packmaster let out a shrill screech of pain. Dispassionately, Issei finished the ratman off with a thrust to the chest. You have slain x20 giant rats. You earn 400 exp. You have slain a packmaster. You earn 75 exp. Do you wish to loot the bodies? Why? And impatiently, Issei hit yes. Giant rat teeth x15. Ragged giant rat pelt x10. Giant rat pelt x5. Unknown magical device x1. Enchanted whip x1. Ragged robe x1. Crude iron dagger x1. 1000 yen. Marking the robe for disposal, Issei kept everything else. He wondered what he was going to do with all of the crap he had in his inventory. 
He'd checked the previous night and all of the armor, including the helmets, were too small for him. The flint knives were tiny little things the length of his pinky and were almost all chipped and ready to break. The only usable spoils were the copper swords. Shrugging again, Issei pulled his hood up and advanced down the corridor again. At the end of the corridor was a large circular room with three doors leading in different directions. The screen popped up. That's all the clues I'm getting. Issei complained. He examined the doors for any hints. Nope. Three plain doors with three identical levers next to them. No hint as to what was behind them. Okay, I'll just pick it random then. He stated. Selecting the one on the right, he pulled the lever down, triggering the clanking of gears as the door sank down. A loud roar emerged from behind it and Issei leapt back, holding his swords at the ready. What emerged from the tunnel made his jaw drop. It was a massive rat, far larger than Biral Warfing had been. Hell, it towered two feet over Issei's head. Large muscle rippled across its chest and arms. The massive head twitched and jerked spasmodically as the glowing red eyes locked onto Issei. Two large clawed arms dragged along the ground as it thumped out of what Issei could see was a holding cell. Attached to the monster's back was an odd machine that glowed green and had several tubes and wires leading into the flesh of the monster. Drool fell from the gaping fanged maw of the ogre as it breathed. Rat Ogre LV6. <laughs> Hell. Issei cursed mildly as his kicked in and calmed him down from his rising panic. With another loud roar, the Rat Ogre leapt at Issei with both arms extended, attempting to grab him. With a curse, Issei leapt to the side and lashed out with his bronze sword at the arm of the Rat Ogre. It bounced off the skin of the monster like it was steel. Bloody bastard hell. He cursed before dodging another swipe of a clawed paw. Those claws were the same size as carving knives and looked just as sharp, if not sharper. This time he attacked with the steel sword he had taken from Byral, scoring a hit down the monster's right underarm. Then, to Issei's surprise, it just regenerated the wound in seconds. Dot 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 you have got to be freaking kidding me. Issei yelped as he dodged another clumsy swipe from the rat ogre. It's strong, fast, and it regenerates. Come on, give me a break here. An idea came to mind. Issei returned the bronze sword to his inventory and drew out one of the iron daggers he had taken from the packmasters. He held it clumsily and threw the knife at the rat ogre's face, scoring a hit just below the eye that made the monster recoil and cover its face with one massive paw. Quickly, Issei ran around to the back of the ogre, leapt into the air, drew back his sword and brought it smashing down on the machinery attached to its back with a yell. The steel blade cleaved the machinery in half and set off an explosion that sent Issei flying back into a wall. Minus 60 HP. You have crippled the rat ogre. Minus 70% movement. Oh. Issei moaned as he shook his head to clear it. The rat ogre was slumped over, twitching, where it had fallen. The arcane device on its back was a melted hunk of melted scrap metal and plastic tubing. Staggering to his feet, Issei walked over to it and looked down at the struggling monster before raising his blade and ending it by decapitation. You have slain a rat ogre. You gained 380 EXP. Issei cocked an eyebrow when no offer to loot came up. After recovering the dagger and stowing it in his inventory, he peered back into the rat ogre's former cage and spotted a chest, similar to the one at the entryway. Opening it, he beheld a circular item that looked suspiciously like it should fit the clasp of his cloak. He picked it up and placed it into the slot, making a screen pop up. <laughs> Why? And what does it do? Issei asked plaintively. <laughs> Better? Issei said with a nod as he hit the Y key. Effect added to. Suppresses all sound from the user by 50%. Useful. With that, Issei turned to the other two doors. He did not want to have to fight another rat ogre, even although he now knew how to fight the bastards. He was down by 145 HP as it was. He had to be careful as he only had 155 left. Let's see here. Issei looked between the door on the left and the middle door, the obvious location for a door to go onwards is the middle one which is a clue that it isn't the way. So, left it is. Thankfully, as the left-hand door clanked open, there was a conspicuous lack of rat ogre behind it, much to Issei's relief. He pulled his hood up and ran down the corridor, which was weird because his footsteps made no sound whatsoever. Talk about freaky. Issei slowed down when the stone bricks around him turned into rock abruptly. This was obviously an older part of the dungeon. Looking around, Issei spotted two more chests, on either side of a large stone door with the face of a large horned rat carved into it. Moving to the chest on the right, he opened it to find a plain steel short sword, basically the same design as his bronze sword. Hastily equipping it, he pulled up its stats. A short sword forged from steel. It bears no maker's mark, but is in excellent condition. Short sword. Slashing damage. S plus 18. 
piercing damage, S plus 14. Rather pleased with this prize, Issei moved on to the last chest. Opening it, he blinked as a pair of arm bracers, made of some kind of red metal, appeared. Equipping them, he once again accessed his equipment screen in order to find out what it did. The light armor made from blood metal, the name given to steel that has been anointed with willingly gifted dragon blood and enchanted by a powerful magician. It offers decent protection for the forearms, but its true value comes from the effect it has on draconic abilities. Light armor grants 15 armor to covered locations. All skills gain plus 5 to their effects and gain 25% more experience while these bracers are worn. Nice, Issei grinned, before a frown came upon him. If he was getting not one, but two cool pieces of equipment, that almost had to mean that the boss was behind that door. There was no such thing as a freebie in a dungeon, after all. Drawing both of his swords, he approached the door cautiously and examined it for a way to open it. Seeing that there was a raised button in the center of the muzzle, he pushed it with the butt of his sword until he heard a click sound. Issei jumped back as the entire carving of the horned rat leapt free of the door and spun around once, twice and thrice before sinking back into the door. The eyes glowed a crimson red before the door sunk into the ground. Ominous, Issei muttered as he advanced into the room beyond the doorway, which made him gape as he caught the whole scope of it. It was a Gotham mini arena, with numerous tattered banners hanging around the seats that surrounded the arena floor, where Issei was standing. Oh crap. He sighed as a high-pitched cackle arose from the large box at the opposite side of the arena from where Issei stood. Standing in it was the fattest ratman he had ever seen. It had a pot belly that made it look as if it was heavily and obesely pregnant. It also had four arms, both carrying whips, with the original two grasping the small barrier in front of it. Welcome, man-thing, to my arena. It squeaked at him in a high-pitched voice at odds with its size. Your death here will mean plenty of tasty data, and your corpse will be an interesting dissection. Far squeaker, the Grand Packmaster LV8. You can talk tough, just like Viral Warfing did. Issei remarked, can you match it though? He couldn't. Fool fool, jeered Far squeaker. Unlike that incompetent fool Viral, I take the leader's position in the rear. Face my pets. One hand reached out and pulled a lever hidden from Issei's sight, which made several pits open up in the floor even as elevators clanked their way to the top, revealing three rat ogres, each as large as the one he had defeated previously, roaring in bestial rage and smacking their talons against the cages that held them captive. As Farsqueaker pulled yet another lever to release the monstrous trio, Issei was planning what to do. He had to destroy the machines that the three rat ogres had attached to their backs, otherwise they'd just regenerate all of his attacks. Problem was, he only had three daggers that he knew could pierce the thick hides of the rat ogres. After he had thrown those at the beasts, he was down to the flint daggers that could barely cut damp paper. Ironically, he had at least ten of them, so they were a lot more expendable thanks to those two factors. Kill kill. The fat rat shrieked at his pets. They roared again and started stomping over to Issei. Why do these ratmen always have to repeat words? Issei wondered absently as he flopped his hood down and took up a stance with his swords. As the lead rat ogre leapt at him, Issei dodged to the side and slashed with both swords at the trailing arm, making a large wound that spat black blood out in a broad spray. Using the time that the monster took to howl in pain, Issei ghosted around its sides and smashed the machine on its back, jumping back immediately so that the explosion didn't knock him on his ass like it had the first time. You have crippled the rat ogre, minus 70% movement. Instead of immediately finishing off the downed monster, Issei turned around to face the other two, who were now regarding him with something approaching wariness in their bestial eyes as they approached him. It would be tougher now because he had been moved from weak prey to prey that has a strong bite in their minds. After enduring a staring contest for a couple of minutes, Issei decided to see how these things handled being on the receiving end for a change. He charged at the one on his right. It roared and lashed out with its claws in an attempt to eviscerate him, but he was able to dodge most of them and block with the bracers that which he couldn't avoid. Sadly, it still managed to get through somehow and made him lose HP. Minus 45 HP. Shit. That was him down to 110 HP now. He lashed out with one sword and scored a cut down the rat ogre's flank, eliciting yet another ear-piercing shriek from the monstrosity. Issei dealt the crippling blow to the monster and it collapsed to the ground, leaving the last rat ogre to face him. As expected, it decided to act exactly as its two comrades had and attacked with its claws and gaping maw, allowing Issei to cripple it in much the same way as he had the three previous rat ogres. He then killed the monsters by decapitating them. You have slain a rat ogre. You gain 380 EXP. You have slain a rat ogre. You gain 380 EXP. You have leveled up. LV6 LV7. You have 5 attribute points to spend. Has leveled up. 
LV1 LV2. You have slain a rat ogre. You gain 380 XP. No, Farsqueaker screamed in denial as it stared down at the rapidly cooling corpses of its so-called pets. No, my best little pets. Those are your best. Issei called up at him, resting his blades on his shoulders comfortably. Better see if you can do any better. You, Farsqueaker growled. I will show you why no one mocks me. The ratman pulled yet another lever, which made him vanish from sight. Issei looked around nervously until he spotted a larger elevator being moved up on the other side of the arena. Oh come on, not the old monster from the floor routine. He groaned, what now? What emerged, seemingly in response to his question, was a rat ogre that made the four Issei had faced up till this point look like underfed runts by comparison. It was at least half again the height of the last one and the same wide. The muscles on the thing bulged like melons and one of the arms had been crudely replaced with a large lump of steel with one side sharpened into a blade. The head was grotesque, half of the skin and muscle were hanging off it, but the teeth inside the maw looked as sharp as swords and were the same size as daggers. Sitting atop it in a saddle, harness contraption was far squeaker, looking very smug. Bone Ripper LV8 Behold, my greatest creation. Bone Ripper, the fat ratman declared squeakily, he shall tear you to pieces. Die die. This might be somewhat troublesome. Issei admitted nervously. Bone repair. Attack. Farsqueaker ordered, his whips lashing out to strike the rat ogre on its rear. With a bass growl, Bone Ripper started forwards. Crap. Issei muttered as he backed off. What to do? He squinted at the monster before he realized that it didn't have one of those machines embedded in its back. Could it not regenerate them? Only one way to find out. He thought as he drew out one of the iron daggers and threw it at the encroaching bone ripper, embedding itself in the super rat ogre's shoulder, making it roar in anger. Man thing, you'll have to do better than that. Farsqueaker jeered, before he squeaked in pain as a flint dagger hit his muzzle, making it bleed. Looks like I just did. Issei shouted defiantly as he threw another flint knife at the fat ratman. Bone ripper, what are you dawdling around for? Kill him. Farsqueaker snarled in a rage after the man thing. Fortunately missed him this time. Issei hurriedly redrew his steel short sword as the massive rat ogre drew closer. He dodged to the side as Farsqueaker lashed out with a whip. Then he had to dodge again when Bone Ripper lashed out with its clawed paw, gouging a line of rock from the floor when it missed. Issei counterattacked with several cuts from his swords on the arm that had just missed him before leaping back again to avoid another swipe from the sword-sized claws. The Sekiryude grimaced as he saw that the black blood from the rat ogre was hissing as it hit the rock. Was it acidic enough to eat through rock? What about steel? He glanced at his swords and was relieved to see that there was no hissing going on there. Bone Ripper. Kill kill. Farsqueaker roared as he attacked with his whips. Issei dodged one and cut the other down to size. Bone Ripper roared, raised its massive blade arm and brought it down, aimed right at Issei. He leapt back, but the displaced air of the swipe sent him flying back. Minus 20 HP. Warning. You have less than 100 HP. Oh, damn it. Issei cursed as he leapt to his feet again. Ha. <sighs> Looks like you're in a bit of a pickle there. Indeed, Bone Ripper's attack with its blade arm was so strong that it had gotten stuck in the rocky floor, much to the befuddlement of the dim-witted monster. Bone Ripper, pull your arm oh. Farsqueaker snarled, and then yelped as another flint dagger landed accurately on his muzzle. Issei charged in to take advantage of Bone Ripper's immobilization. He hacked and slashed across its back and even cut off the beast's tail, which made a screen pop up. You have cut off one of Bone Ripper's limbs. You have inflicted the status on Bone Ripper. With a roar of pain, Bone Ripper finally ripped its blade arm from the arena floor and whirled to face Issei with a growl. Crap, looks like it's time to get serious. Issei thought and called out. You have been affected by the status effect. Your power has been doubled. The red fingerless gauntlet materialized and glowed red with power. Issei felt this boost more than the first two times he'd used the. It was probably because he had far more impressive stats to double this time around. He mentally added actual jogging and weight lifting to his training schedule. With a roar, Bone Ripper slashed at Issei with its blade arm. Issei ducked under it and struck at the part of its arm where the blade was connected to the stump of its shoulder with both swords in a scissor cut motion. His blades bit deep into the flesh, but Issei was forced to halt his attack prematurely in order to dodge the monster's teeth as it tried to bite him in half. Farsqueaker lashed out with its only remaining whip, but Issei shouted and deflected it, although it wasn't a classic parry. He then lashed out with his other sword and sliced the whip in half, leaving Farsqueaker all but defenseless. Issei ran around the monster and cut several times with his swords, hoping to enrage the rat ogre to the point that it would use its massive blade arm again. And, as expected, Bone Ripper roared and raised its blade arm, bringing it down at Issei, 
who had already leapt back and driven his swords into the ground to not fly off like the last time. Bone Ripper, fool fool, Farsqueaker raged impotently. Issei took the chance offered and started hacking at the stuck arm with his swords, finally cutting it off in a geyser of black blood and a roar of pain and fury from Bone Ripper. You have cut off one of Bone Ripper's limbs. You have increased the status too. Issei backed off so he could give Bone Ripper a once over. The monster's tail and left arm were severed, disgorging gouts of blood that was pooling around its clawed feet. The rat ogre was breathing heavily and was probably going into shock due to the damage Issei had inflicted and the amount of blood it had lost. <clears throat> you have been affected by the status effect. Your power has been doubled. Limit reached. Starting countdown. 3. 259. 258. Far squeaker. It's time to finish this. Issei yelled once he saw the timer. He charged at Bone Ripper, who razor its only remaining hand sluggishly to strike at the pesky enemy that was killing him. The Sekiryude dodged the clumsy and slow attack, spinning around to drive both of his blades into the gut of the rat ogre, dragging them through its body before ripping them out and disemboweling the monster in an explosion of blood. You have fatally wounded Bone Ripper. He will die in five. With a choking growl, its clawed paw futilely trying to keep its guts from spilling out, Bone Ripper collapsed onto its knees before it slammed face first onto the arena floor with a thump spilling Farsqueaker from his perch and sending him sprawling to the floor. No, Bone Ripper, the fat ratman yelled in disbelief. Issei didn't waste any more time with Bone Ripper and charged at Farsqueaker. The ratman came to his senses when he spotted Issei, and he lashed out with what remained of his whips, but to no avail as the Sekiryude cut through them. No, this cannot happen. Farsqueaker shrieked in terror as he cast away his whips and drew out a steel dagger with each of his arms before attacking rabidly with them forcing Issei onto the defensive from the ferocity of the Ratman's attack. What's wrong? I thought you were better than Byral. Issei taunted him as the Sekiryude dodged another frantic swipe of a blade. You don't look so good by the way. Not been getting enough exercise. It was true. Farsqueaker was panting like a steam engine at full tilt after just a minute or so of combat. Even Issei had been better than that at first. Silence. The Ratman shrieked. Die 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 die. You first. Issei grunted as he kicked Farsqueaker in his rotund belly, making him stagger back, then stuck his swords into the rat's body, one in the chest and one through the stomach. Da 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 no da 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 how da 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 could this? The rat rasped, I am a genius. How could I da da lose da 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 to a man thing? With that, Farsqueaker slumped, Issei drawing his swords out to allow the body of the Grand Packmaster to fall to the floor completely. He then went over and gave Bone Ripper a mercy stroke, severing its head. He then dismissed the, with only seconds to spare on the timer. You have slain Bone Ripper. You gained 600 EXP. You have slain Farsqueaker, the Grand Packmaster. You gained 700 EXP. You have acquired X4 Steel Knives. You have acquired X2 Skill Books. You have acquired the, you have acquired 6000 Yen. Has leveled up. LV1 LV2. As a result of repeated actions, the skill has been created. A skill that allows the user to view information about people, animals and objects that this skill is directed upon. The higher this skill's level is, the more information is gathered. 5 MP per use. As a result of repeated actions, the skill has been created. A skill that permits the user to use the offhand for tasks. The higher the level of this skill, the more skilled the user will become with all manner of tasks. Passively reduces the offhand penalty from 95% to 80%. As a result of repeated actions, the skill has been created. Although called knife throwing, this skill is actually for the throwing of any handheld bladed weapon. The higher the skill level, the more damage each thrown weapon will deal and the longer range you will be able to throw. Passively grants plus 5 dex. Actively grants the user the ability to throw knives, with damage calculated as STR weapon damage by 2. Range, 8 feet. Bonus damage, 0. Okay dot 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 that's cool. Issei said with a grin. He was curious about the necklace so he equipped it and was taken aback by the loud trumpeting that came out of nowhere. You have gathered the three pieces of the set of equipment. You gain 1000 yen. Acquiring all pieces of the set grants you one random lesser skill. You gain the regeneration rate of half devils and lesser demons. Regeneration rate of 1 HP every 15 minutes. Issei nodded happily. He'd needed something like that, since HP potions didn't seem to be forthcoming for whatever reason. 
He then checked out the part of the unknown set. This necklace alters the voice of the user to be utterly gender neutral and inflectionless. As a result, however, you suffer a 25% penalty to any attempt to any or actions taken while wearing this necklace. Really? He said, and then paused in surprise. He really sounded different. Now to get out of here. He said, only for the door to slam shut behind him. Again, Issei shook his head in exasperation. He really should have expected that, but no, he had to open his mouth. Well then, if I were a way out, where would I be? Issei muttered, his eyes locked onto the box where Farsqueaker had stood when he had initially entered the arena. Resolved, Issei jogged over to the box and used his new daggers to climb up to the box. Just as he hopped over the edge, however, the arena door cracked, crumbled and collapsed. Issei put his hood up rather hastily. Then his jaw dropped as he saw who was striding through the shattered doorway. Ria's Gremory LV-40 Akino Heimjima LV-38 Tiba Yudo LV-35 Tojo Kaniko LV-33 What the hell? Let's go. Regular speech. Opai. Thoughts. Sacred Gur. Deedrag speech. Chapter 4 Dodging Devils Issei was having trouble adjusting to this situation. Being targeted by a weird secret society that hated paranormals and supernaturals was one thing. Having four of the most popular members of my school glare him down was quite another. Activated. Phew. That was a relief. Now he could plan things out properly. Ria's Gremory was one of the two great one Sama of Kyo Academy. Her western beauty was highly attractive, just as her mysterious air lent the allure of the unknown to her. President of the Occult Research Club. It was completely unknown what they got up to in their clubhouse in the old school building. Similarly, Haimjima Akino was the other great one Sama of the Academy and was the Yamato Nechiko to Ria's western beauty. Rumors had it she was the keeper of a Shinto shrine somewhere in Kyo, also a member of the Orc. Iyudo Kiba was the so-called prince of the academy and was disliked by almost all the males, but especially by Issei, Matohama and Matsuda. Aside from being kind and considerate to all females, nobody really knew much about him. Also a part of the Orc, Tojo Kaniko was a petite girl who was called the mascot of Kyo because she was so adorably cute. Again, not much else was known about her and she was a member of the Orc. Is anyone here, Kaniko-chan? Ria's asked her junior, who concentrated for a moment before pointing unerringly at Issei's current position. Someone standing in that box, although it's very faint. The little girl replied in a monotone voice. Issei had to chuckle self-depreciatingly at that. Typical. He had gotten his hands on something to conceal his presence from mundane and minor magic detection, and the mascot of Kuo found him without even trying. Could the person concealing themselves kindly show themselves, please? The redhead called out politely. There was steel in her eyes as she spoke, however, indicating that the request was little more than a demand. He spoke without thinking. Who are you to make demands of me? His voice, bland and inflectionless as the made it, was nevertheless clear and audible. Ria's Gremory's eyebrows shot up and she held herself straighter. I am Ria's Gremory, heiress to the house of Gremory and ruler of this territory. She replied loftily, You say your name, especially that of your family, as if I should know it. Issei observed as he frantically searched for a way out. He spotted the row of levers that the Grand Packmaster had used to summon the rat ogres. Three were pulled, with two still upright. His words made the group below him exchange looks. You have no idea who I am, in the middle of my territory. Riaz asked skeptically, You have no idea who the House of Gremory are. No, Issei replied, I've been too busy killing those abominations to worry about petty things like territory and who is the titular ruler of it. Above the levers there were pictograms. The first had a crude diagram of what had to be a rat ogre, the second had bars, and the third had a picture of a broken bone. Bone ripper, of course. The fourth had more bars and the fifth had a pictogram of what looked like giant rats. A small smile crept across Issei's face. Now that he had a plan, he had to find information about exactly who, and more to the point what, Ria's Gremory was. That could wait until later, however. Ria's, he could have only gained knowledge of the supernatural recently. Akino said softly, nodding. The redhead asked, is that true? Correct. Issei answered, I am afraid that further conversation will have to be postponed as I have a lunch engagement elsewhere. That isn't in the cards, I'm afraid. Ria said slowly, I wish to know who you are, why you are rampaging through my territory and what these ratmen are. I will have answers. All good and reasonable questions. Issei allowed, but we will have to talk another time, in a place that does not reek of sewage. In the meantime, you can kill some of those rats that I have yet to get to. 
With that, he pulled the fourth lever before moving on to pull the fifth lever. Immediately, a large metal cage slammed down atop the arena, locking the group of teens in the arena and opening up dog-sized holes in the walls. Out of these holes, giant rats emerged, snarling and foaming at the mouth. Why you? Rhea snarled, magic pooling in her hands. Fare thee well, Issei said, wincing inside. This had been a bad idea, but it had been the only way to run away from the situation. All of them were level 30 plus. No way could he, a lowly level 7, fight them and expect to win. He turned around and dashed away down the passage that led away from the arena, the stone door slamming down firmly behind him. Fortunately, the passage was lit by torches and so he traveled down the path until he came to a room similar to the one from the... Like that one, it was sparsely lit, with a single table in the center. It also had a single piece of paper on it, with familiar writing on it. Walking over, he picked it up and started reading. To Division Head, Project Rat King. It has been noted by the council that the species hashtag 456B has developed several subspecies, such as the so-called clan rats, storm vermin, packmasters, and giant rats. We would like to remind you that while diversity is good, species 456B is primarily for human wave tactics, with the emphasis on rapid replacement of expendable troops. Some members of the council, however, are interested to see exactly what further mutations and strains may result in future generations, so you are being allocated additional resources to make such experiments feasible without compromising the bulk of your current work. Be warned however that results are required and should you fail to live up to the expectations being put upon you, there will be consequences. On a different note, you are to compile a list of recommendations for the location of full field testing of species 456b. The criteria for testing sites are that the location must have, at the very least, an active presence of devils. Preferably there will be active presences of at least one of the other main target races as well. The council suggests somewhere in the Orient, as the churches hold far too much influence in America and Europe and are too close to rapid reinforcement from the Vatican and other religious centers. For the purity and sanctity of our species and souls, definitely the purifiers, Issei thought as he placed the paper in his inventory. The last line was practically a calling card. Looking around, he couldn't see any sign of anything else of use or that drew his eye, other than the doors on the other side of the room. So he headed over that way, and cautiously opened them, revealing a flight of stairs leading upwards. Emerging in an abandoned warehouse, he quickly returned his battle gear to his inventory and set off home. He had a lot to think about. With the Gremory group, eat this, Rhea snarled, and blasted another dozen malformed rodents with her power of destruction, reducing them to a mere memory in a blink on an eye, while Akino blasted the infernal things with her thunder. Kiba was slicing them to pieces with his demonic sword, while Kaneko punched and kicked them into paste with her enhanced strength. Once the walls stopped disgorging rats and the last was killed, Rhea actually growled. How dare he attack me? She snarled, how dare he attack my servants. Riaz, you were acting very dot 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 pushy dot 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 with him. Akino pointed out as she magically cleaned the assorted blood and guts from Kaneko with her magic. I think he must be a sacred gear user of some sort. Awoken recently, and he was telling the truth when he said he hadn't a clue as to who you or the house of Gremory are. It wouldn't explain the fact he or she was all but inflectionless, transparent and set monsters on us. Riaz countered hotly. I couldn't make much out, but he knew that we were stronger than him. Kiba volunteered. I think we were scaring the pants off of whomever it was just by standing there. You know how some get humans into their peerages, but you. The crimson-haired ruined princess mouth twisted in disgust as she thought of those few among the high-class devils who kidnapped and forced humans into their peerages. Disgraceful and thoroughly fitting that those peerages were the ones who had their killed by stray devil aspirants more often than not. I take your point, Yudo. She sighed. Still, this is troubling. Did you hear the way he referred to the Ratmen as abominations? Even with that magically induced monotone and inflectionless cadence he had going. I could tell that he felt nothing but contempt for the rat men and their pets. Not that I blame him. Messy. Kaneko opined. I think something is being schemed in the shadows. Ria's side again. We'll keep an eye out for anything unusual around Kuo, as well as keeping an eye out for whoever it is behind that enchanted device. New to the supernatural or no, I cannot have someone running around killing things on my territory without so much as a by your leave. Akino, can you inform Sona for me? I have to go and meet with Beelzebub-sama soon. Of course, Riaz. Akino nodded. Now, should we leave? It's going to take some time to get the stink of these sewers from our clothes. A good point. Riaz nodded. Kaneko-chan, if you would. Nodding, the reincarnated Nikosho walked nonchalantly over to the bars in front of the door and punched them into scrap metal, 
opening the way out for the rest of them. As her peerage walked out of the complex, the of the group was deeply troubled. Although her peerage was busy with school and contracts most of the day and night, it shouldn't have been possible to build two bases such as this inside Kyo Town without her knowledge, yet they were present. Sona and I need to have a meeting and talk about this situation so our older siblings don't involve themselves. Ria's thought firmly. She was a king in her own territory and she did not need Serzech's Lucifer butting in with his sister complex. She loved him dearly, but there was only so much babying that she could take, which was part of the reason why she came to Japan. The same applied to Sona Citri, heiress of the House of Citri. Seraphal Leviathan was, if such a thing was possible, even worse than Serzech, treating anything that came against her beloved elder sister as an obstacle that needed to be removed. Sona, like Rias herself, loved her sister, but was very much embarrassed by her antics. Neither of the heiresses wanted interference from their all-powerful siblings, so Sona would doubtless agree to share the burden of searching for answers. Sona's servants were not as unique as her own but she had more of them, seven or eight at the last count compared to Ria's four, one of whom was sealed away. Yes, this situation would be contained one way or another dot 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 then maybe she could concentrate on removing herself from that insult of a marriage contract with Riser Phoenix. Hi, later, Hyoto residence. Having gotten back in time for lunch, Issei had enjoyed just sitting down and having a relaxing meal with his mother, which was very rare nowadays, what with school and his dad going to work at all hours of the day and night. Once lunch was taken care of and the dishes done, he retreated to his room to examine his stats since he had leveled up. Name, Hyoto Issei. Class, The Gamer. Level, 7. Next level, 825 EXP. Title, Apai Baka. HP, 350 over 350. MP, 175 over 175. STR, 45. STA, 41. Dex, 51. INT, 12. Wise, 17. Luck, Cha, 22. Attribute points, 5. Y equals, 21,212. Wow, that trait was really doing wonders for his physical stats. Seriously though, he needed to up his mental ones. He dropped all five points into INT. Why is dot 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 O? Oh, the blood metal bracers must affect as well. He muttered in realization as he looked at his charisma stat. Definitely useful. Now, what was the loot from the boss? Reaching into his inventory, he pulled out the two skill books. Immediately, there was a loud ding. Sound from out of nowhere and a screen popped up. You have acquired your first skill books. Skill books allow you to learn the skill they contain. All start at level 1, just like self-learned skills. You can only learn 3 skills from skill books per day, however, as long as you are below level 20. Additionally, learning the skill consumes the skill book. Issei was impressed and curious about what kind of skills he had gotten his hands on. Placing them down on his bed, they looked just like writing pads, albeit thin ones. He picked up the first one. Do you wish to learn this? Y M. Yell yeah. He said with wide eyes, exactly what I needed. Stabbing the Y button, he watched as the book dissolved into blue light and vanished inside of his chest. Congratulations. You have learned. The ability to use magic to create and control the earth, and, to a lesser extent, the bounties of the earth. Since ancient times, this has been used to read the future, alter the landscape, and other such uses. Lesser earth magic is the lowest branch of earth magic and is not very powerful. It can be highly useful in certain situations, however. Gain a 15% power boost to all spells thanks to access to tier 0 and tier 1 spells. Spell unlocked. The tier 0 spell has been unlocked. Spell unlocked. The tier 1 spell has been unlocked. Spell unlocked. The tier 1 spell has been unlocked. The most basic spell in all of earth magic. This allows the user to infuse their magic with the earth and alter its composition. The amount of earth affected varies on experience and the amount of power you put into it. Costs 5 MP per minute. Allows the control of 1 cubic foot of earth or soil. The earth, soil can be moved and shaped, but is still just soil or earth. It cannot be changed, just moved. <laughs> A basic application of earth magic. This spell surrounds one of the user's fists with solidly packed earth and rocks, adding armor and upping damage dealt by that fist. It is not indestructible, however and can be overwhelmed by strong enough blows by and to the user. Initially costs 30 MP and then a further 10 MP per minute to maintain it. One hand, selected by the user at the casting stage, is surrounded in earth and rock, mimicking the movements of the hand. That hand receives 5 armor and barehanded damage is raised by 5 as well. 
This does not take into account modifiers from other skills. Armor and barehanded damage raised by 15% to 5.75 by the effect of. A basic use of earth magic for offensive purposes. This simply rips a chunk of earth or rock from the ground, compresses and hardens it and then fires it at the enemy. Costing the most MP most of all the tier 1 and tier 0 spells, it is also the only offensive ability in those tiers. At higher levels, the user can combine this spell with other spells for additional effects. Costs 40 MP per shot. Deals multiplied by 5, divided by 2 and plus 15% damage. Issei whistled at that. Those three spells were very useful. Well, the tier 0 one was a bit useless, but it had possibilities outside of combat. His attention was drawn by another window popping up. Congratulations. You have learned your first three spells. These are the ones randomly generated by the system for you to receive. Each tier has 10 spells apiece and you will now be able to receive spells in skill book form as monster drops. Every time you achieve a tier or tiers, you will receive 1 to 3 spells for that branch of magic at random as a reward. Once you have collected all spells for a tier and achieve level 10 with them all, you will be able to proceed to the next tier. Some tiers are unlocked under special conditions only. Okay, useful to know. He commented, now then, what is the other one? He picked up the other skill book and looked at the window that popped up. Do you wish to learn this? Why? And definitely something that I need. Issei muttered. He couldn't exactly pull out his swords in the middle of the street if the purifiers attacked him, could he? Knowing how to fight hand-to-hand -hand was probably the best bet. Hitting Y again, he waited for the window to pop up. Congratulations, you have learned. The oldest and most basic way to fight in the history of the world. Using your fists and feet to fight is seen in these modern times as a quaint anachronism in the face of guns and the like. Yet, in the world of the supernatural, this can be vital and necessary for the sake of self-defense. Grants user the basic knowledge of how to fight unarmed. Grants an additional plus one to all unarmed attacks or with gloves, gauntlets. Gains bonus points to unarmed attacks for every 10 points in STR. Current bonus, plus four. Gains bonus points to unarmed defensive moves for every 10 points in dex. Current bonus, plus five. Ha dot 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 so instead of giving me a type of fighting style, it makes me familiar with fighting in general. He concluded after staring at the screen for a moment. Closing it, he then opened his inventory again and pulled out the magic eyes and enchanted whips from the pack masters. The new skill he received the previous day would be perfect to find out exactly what these things did. As it was only on level 1, however, he would have to level it up before he would get any details on them. He said, staring at the first whip. <clears throat> level 4. Whip. A whip inspelled with an unknown enchantment. Piercing damage, 0. Slashing damage, S divided by 2. Bludgeoning damage, S plus 12. A bit more than I was expecting from a level 1 skill. Issei commented. He used on the other whips to find they were all exactly identical in terms of damage and level. It made sense, sort of. In some tabletop games, if you didn't know what a magic item did, it simply had no effect on the outcome of a fight. In this case, the lack of knowledge of what the enchantment was did nothing to the combat stats. Has leveled up. LV1 LV12. Okay, now let's try that first one again. He said, focusing. <clears throat> Level 4. Whip. A whip enchanted with the power to increase the force of its strikes slightly. A minor enchantment, yet one that can be very useful. Durability, 25 40 Piercing damage, 0. Slashing damage, S divided by 2. Bludgeoning damage, S plus 12 plus 20. Ha dot 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 go figure that one. Issei muttered. He the other three whips and two were exactly the same. The only difference being the level of their durability. That was something of a concern, as he had no idea how to recover it. But as he has a lot of copper and bronze swords, he wasn't too concerned. The last whip was only slightly different as well. Level 4. Whip. A whip enchanted to turn intangible twice a day upon utterance of the command word misborn. Useful for bypassing mundane and lesser magical defenses, it is useful as a hidden trump card. Their ability, 30 40th. Special ability, intangibility. Upon the trigger word being uttered, the length of the whip, aside from the handle, turns insubstantial for up to 10 seconds before reverting back to solidity. Piercing damage, 0. Slashing damage, S divided by 2. Bludgeoning damage, S plus 12. Issei replaced the whips into his inventory as he considered what he had uncovered. The whips were interesting, but he wasn't really of the inclination to use them as weapons. They were dot 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 not his style, bluntly put. Dismissing his thoughts, he turned his attention to the magic eyes that he had taken from the packmasters. There were only two of them, but they glittered as if they were made of a precious stone, like emeralds. Something about them made him wary though. 
he said firmly. Warp lock eye. Level 5. Artifact. An eye carved from purified warp stone and loaded with various enchantments, allowing the user to see through it and even perceive the use of magic. Warp stone is a volatile magical substance, however, and creates mutations and insanity with constant exposure to flesh. Special ability. Magic perception. The user can see the flow of magic on people. Blue if not in use, orange if being channeled passively to a spell or item and red if being used actively. Warding replaces your actual eye if used. Eyeing the two eyes a lot more warily than just a few moments ago, Issei replaced them inside his inventory and resolved to find a way to dispose of them safely as soon as was possible. No way was he even touching those things again without gloves or tongs. You make a very sensible decision. Plus one wise. I swear this gamer thing is taunting me. Issei grumbled. Lying back on his bed, he wondered what he should do for the rest of today. He could go out and raid another Ratman den, but he really didn't want to annoy Gremory Senpai more than he already had. Ria's Gremory dot 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 just who was she anyway? The way she spoke implied that she was in charge of Kyo somehow, but how? Who were the members of the occult research club and what relation did they have to her? Issei wasn't skilled at reading people by any means, but they had all deferred to her as their leader in a manner similar to how a samurai would treat their sworn liege lord in one of those period dramas that his father liked to watch. Information. He needed information on Ria's Gremory and her group before he could carry on attacking the Ratman's bases in Kyo. He thought for a minute before facebombing. Duh. He had his skill. He could casually scan her at school and she'd be none the wiser. At least dot 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 he didn't think that counted as a spell, so any magic protections she might have wouldn't be set off. Well, I should get my homework out of the way. He thought morosely. He hated doing schoolwork, mainly because it was boring. He wasn't too bad at it, but things like maths and history weren't really his cup of tea. If anything, he was most fond of classical Japanese, if only because it gave him plenty of time to think during class. Sighing in frustration, he reached for his school books. Five days later, Kyo Academy, the combined ability to complete all aspects of schoolwork, from homework to classwork to replying to the questions of the teacher. Level max, 100. Passively grants plus 10 INT. Passively raises the chance of successfully completing classwork correctly by 30%. Passively raises the chance of successfully completing homework correctly by 35%. Passively raises the chance of successfully answering the teacher correctly by 30%. Issei's eye twitched as he regarded the new skill he had received after completing his homework. Five days on and he still couldn't believe that this kind of skill was available. It was certainly convenient, make no mistake about that, but his suspension of disbelief was having major difficulty accepting it. Issei, a familiar voice called. He looked up to see the other two members of what the school referred to as the Hentai San and Gumi, Matsuda and Matohama. Matsuda LV6, Matohama LV4. The fact that until recently he had been a lower level than Matsuda pissed Issei off somehow. Dude, what happened to your cheek? Matohama asked in concern. Having taken the bandage off, Issei now had a long, thin scar down the length of his jaw. It wasn't glaringly obvious, but it wasn't hidden either. Some nutjob broke into my house and held me and my parents hostage. Issei replied sourly. He tried to kill me after going ever further off the deep end after a phone call. Otto-san and I took him down after I got a lucky hit in. I was lucky to get away with just a scar from his knife attack. Shitty luck, man. Matsuda said sympathetically, your parents all right. Eh, shaken but not stirred. He replied with a shrug. Anyway, want to go peek on the kendo club? Matohama asked eagerly. It was so, so tempting, but he had to remain firm. He wanted to get rid of that damn Apai Baka title. Sorry, can't. He told his shocked friends, I'll be buried under with catch-up work for being off for a week, remember? Crap, forgot about that. Matsuda cursed. Of all the perverted trio, he got the highest grades and helped his friends stay above the cutoff point for their teachers to have a discussion with their parents. Need some help. Let me have a look at what I have to get through first. Issei demurred, you two go have fun. Again, luck sucks man. Matohama commiserated as he and Matsuda headed off to their usual peaking spot. Sighing despondently, Issei padded to the staff office to talk to his teachers. On the way, he spotted his quarry, Ria's Gremory, talking with the student council president, Shitori Sona. She was the third most popular girl in Kyo Academy after Ria's Gremory and Haimjima Akino, popular with girls and slightly masochistic boys among others. She was a strict disciplinarian and had a cool, unshakable air about her that was attractive. Her body may not have been comparable to the other two but it was svelte and live. The name floating above her head gave him pause, however. Sona Citri LV41 
them. What the heck was going on here? Another heiress to a family he had no idea about. Things were getting more and more confusing. He would Sona Kaichu later as she was around far more often than Ria's Gremory. He whispered as he walked towards the two girls. He ignored the screen that popped up as he walked past, nodding politely to them as he passed. When he got to the boys' bathroom, he took a stall and locked it tight before having a look at it. Name, Ria's Gremory. Race, Pureblood Devil. Class, Level, 40, Next Level, EXP. Title, Crimson-Haired Ruined Princess, Heiress of the House of Gremory. HP, Divided by, MP, Divided by. STR, STA, DEX, INT, WISE, LUCK, CHA, LD, SPECIAL STATUS, PURE-BLOODED DEVIL, DEVIL WINGS, JOINT RULER OF QO TOWN, DEVIL'S TEMPTATION, PERKS, HEIRESS OF THE HOUSE OF GREMORY, CRIMSON-HAIRED RUINED PRINCESS, SEDUCTION FROM THE DARKNESS, FLAWS, LIGHT BANE, HOLY WEAKNESS, CARES TOO MUCH, WHAT THE FUCK, SA BREATHED, DEVIL, GREMORY SENPAI WAS AN ACTUAL DEVIL, AS IN FIRE AND BRIMSTONE FROM WESTERN MYTHOLOGY. What the hell was going on here? Shaking his head, he looked at the stats. He couldn't see any numbers. Reaching out to press the question marks replacing the numbers in HP, a screen popped up at his touch. This person is too high of a level for to read their HP at its current level. Additionally, they are of a supernatural race with a high degree of skill and magic, which is interfering in the use of. This made the brown-haired boy frown. His was at level 10 right now as he had been exhausting his MP every day for the last 5 days to get it up as high as he could get it in case of something like this and it still wasn't high enough. Lesson learned. He mused with a shrug. Next time, he'd have it considerably higher. Moving on to the special status, the one was obvious. Opening it up, he discovered that she could manifest her wings whenever she pleased using her demonic energy, which was the devil's version of MP, he presumed. On the other hand was probably what it sounded like. But he didn't think devils were concerned about bloodlines, so he clicked on it to see the details. The bearer of this status is 100% devil and has no non-devil personages in his or her ancestry. This grants their demonic magic a bonus of 20% power with minus 15% depth cost to all spells. Additionally their body will naturally be far stronger than that of a human from a young age, starting off with a base count of 20 per physical stat. It also bestows the flaws and, as well as the perk in the special status upon the holder. Issei had to silently whistle in amazement. Looks as if being a devil seriously had its perks. The bonuses to their own brand of magic alone would be worth it, let alone the physical stat bonus. There was an application of the natural charm and persuasion abilities of devils. The status would explain why she was so angry at him for basically ignoring her. Still, when he pulled up the list of people who had to give her notice before doing something in her territory, Humans were only included if they were a member of any church or the Shinto pantheon. Other than that, it was a list of supernatural races, like Yakai. Filing that as a counter-argument if she pushed the point should they meet later, he checked out her perks and flaws. The person who bears this title is the first person in line to inherit the title of Gremory, one of the few remaining 72 pillar families. This grants them nigh untouchable status and authority within the Gremory territories, as well as the stat. This title denotes the holder to be a female descendant of the Bale family and one who has inherited their talents at that. The title will always retain the Ruined Princess section, but the first section will change depending on the hair color of the holder. The holder has access to the unique demonic magic of the Bale family, the power of destruction, as well as a further 20% increase to the power of all demonic magic. Devils are well known for taking on the appearance of handsome men and beguiling females, especially in the case of the succubi and incubate. As such, the holder of this perk has the optimal appearance for being seductive for their gender and general appearance, granting them the charisma stat and a further plus 10 to all and actions. <laughs> Created by Lucifer, the first Mao, devils are the very antithesis of angels. They gain power in the darkness and shadows, while the weaker among them lose power in the sunlight. Any who hold this power gain plus 10 buff to all stats during the night. Additionally, those who are below level 20 suffer a minus 20 debuff to all physical stats and a minus 10 debuff to all mental stats during the day, regardless of whether it is sunny or not. Light-type weapons will also be 20% more effective against any devil, regardless of level. The god of the Bible's holy power is even worse for devils than light, attacking their souls as well as their bodies. Should a devil become injured as a result of holy-type weaponry, spells or auras, the effects will be 50% more effective and reduce any healing spell or item's effectiveness by 60%. The holder of this flaw is very empathic and caring towards those he or she cares about. This is usually a good thing. 
except it can lead to them being paralyzed if something happens to those they care for in the middle of battle. The holder receives a 25% bonus to reputation gains to those he or she is at status or higher. But should those at that status be harmed around her, there is a 50% chance of he or she freezing up and hesitating. Damn, Issei whispered. The devils had a very powerful skill set at their fingertips, especially a pure-blood devil like Ria's Gremory. The downsides were severe, especially the light and holy weaknesses, but still it was a pretty sweet deal altogether. The last flaw was a pretty surprising one for a devil, but it did fit what little he knew about the crimson-haired girl. She was fairly gentle and had begged out of dissection day in biology, according to rumors. Just for the sake of comparison, he'd have a look at Kiba Yuyudo, as he was in a couple of Issei's classes. That would be an interesting read, if nothing else. Kiba was the idol of all the Academy's girls, but held himself aloof from them and the boys as well. This whole devil thing would go a long way towards explaining why he did that. Issei stood up and flushed the toilet before leaving as a cover. This time he really did have to go to the staff office and talk to his teachers. He'd arrived early just in case he ran into Ria's grammary as he had done. Time to pay the piper. He grimaced. He didn't like teachers much. They were either stodgy old men or women. Young Eichmann males with no idea what it was like for someone with average looks or arrogant young women who looked down on average boys. Most of his teachers were Eichmann, which pissed him off something cruel. After school, he vowed he'd start dungeoneering again. That would be nice and cathartic for him. Kikuchi sensei would be the worst. Fortunately, he had all his homework done, so they couldn't be angry at him for that dot 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 he hoped. After school, Issei, what's with the long face? Matsuda asked as he and Matohama jogged up to their friend. Issei did look sour as he replied. None of the sensei believe me about what happened. They're asking for a parent-teacher meeting regarding my blatant lying and over-exaggeration of the facts or so they say. That's not going to make them happy, Matohama said with a wince. Didn't your parents tell them what had happened to you the day it actually went down? Slipped their minds. Issei shrugged, meh. They'll set things straight when this meeting happens. It'll be nice to see the teachers eat humble pie for a change. This made his friends nod sagely. Seeing the boot on the other foot for a change would be good. Let me guess, you have to head home and tell your folks about this, Matsuda predicted as he adjusted his glasses. Yup, Issei nodded in confirmation. Welp, all the more beauties for us. Matohama finished for his bespectacled friend. Shouting their goodbyes, the two charged off to once more peep on a female club. A harem is worth it. Issei chanted in his head, a harem is worth it. After he walked home and told his parents about what the teachers said, he was taken aback at how angry they both were with the school. Evidently, having almost been killed by a lunatic, his parents were in hyper-defense mode regarding their family, especially Issei, as the only one who had been harmed by the man. After a light dinner, Issei made his going for a walk excuse and headed out, pulling the map out and heading towards Ratman Denvi, which was in another run-down building in a quiet part of town. Equipping his armor, cloak and necklace, Issei stepped forward, prompting a window to pop up. You are about to enter the dungeon. Once you enter this dungeon, you must clear it before exiting. Do you wish to enter? Why? In. Warp Rat. What the heck? The names for these dungeons got more and more confusing. Shrugging, Issei hit Y and then yelped as he was dropped down a hole. The universe is laughing at me. Issei shrieked in his mind as he fell, cape flapping in the wind. Let's go. Regular speech. Popeye. Thoughts. Sacred Gur. Deed Reg speech. Chapter 5. A Right Rat's Nest. In the pit. Ah, Issei yelled as he plummeted down the pit. He wasn't thrilled about this situation and really hoped that there was something to catch him at the bottom other than solid ground. Otherwise he would lose a lot of HP. Thank Kami for. After some time, he finally caught sight of the bottom of the pit he was in, and it did not fill him with eagerness as it was a pool of black water. Quickly curling into a ball just before he hit the water, it still hurt Issei quite a bit. Minus 50 HP. Swimming up and breaking the surface, Issei gasped for air before heading to the side of the pool and hauling himself out, covered in the black water. He was just glad he hadn't swallowed any of the stuff. Looking around, he spotted a chest outside the only doorway, so headed over to it and opened it up, finding a skill book inside. Uh, Do you wish to learn this skill? Yes, no. Uh, Seriously, Issei asked aloud before shrugging. It would be useful at the moment, provided he rolled a spell that let him remove this crap from his clothes, so he hit the yes button. Congratulations, you have learned. <laughs> Created by mages in the distant past to make living alone in towers bearable, without the grunt labor part. Many spells have since become redundant thanks to modern conveniences, but since most magicians and other spellcasters shun them, the importance of these spells has yet to fluctuate. 
grants access to Tier 0 and Tier 1 spells. Spell unlocked. The Tier 1 spell has been unlocked. Spell unlocked. The Tier 0 spell has been unlocked. Spell unlocked. The Tier 1 spell has been unlocked. Dust, made up of dead human skin cells, plant pollen, human and animal hairs, textile fibers, paper fibers and other things from the local environment, is a constant nuisance and one of the reasons people dislike cleaning. This spell removes and kind of dust within a set area. A master of this spell can remove dust from an entire house all at once. Area of effect, 1 foot square, 5 MP per use. One of the banes of working in the garden or with plants in general is that compost and dirt cling to your skin and clothes no matter what you do, even if you wear gloves. This spell surrounds your hands with a small aura of brown light that repels small clumps of dirt. With time, the user can surround their entire body with the aura, although it is still fairly weak. Target location, hands. Dirt will be unable to cling to the affected locations unless an overwhelming amount is dropped atop the areas, canceling the spell. Aura armor is 25 and decreases rapidly if a great amount of earth is placed atop or around them. 5 MP to activate, 3 MP per minute to maintain it. As it is an earth-based spell, receives plus 15% to its power due to a basic cleaning spell used by traveling mages to remove dirt, sweat, blood and the like from their clothes and skin. It is the more powerful version of the tier 0 spell. Area of effect target, self. Effect, weak. Duration, 15 seconds. 10 MP per use. All right, this A cheered, activating the spell he had been after. White light gleamed around him and the muck from the pool flaked and fell off in clumps before the light faded. It took another couple of uses of before he was completely clean. I swear, this is way too convenient. He muttered. Was his gaming gear taunting him? getting him filthy before giving him magic to remove it. Shaking his head, Issei pulled his hood up and advanced down the passage, ending up in another round room. He was unsurprised to find another chest with a skeleton over it. Behind the chest was another set of stairs, going up this time. Opening it, Issei found two things, a red-colored metal Japanese helmet and a skill book. He chose to pick the helmet up first and used on it. A Japanese helmet made from blood metal, it is made in the Hoshi Bakai style. It offers decent light protection for the head and can have a menpo added to add protection and hide the identity of the wearer. But its true value is in how it nurtures the growth of draconic abilities while being worn. Kabuto style helmet. Grants 25 armor to all covered locations. Increases the EXP gained by all skills by 30%. Man, Issei whistled, so wearing it. Now what do we have here? He picked up the skill book and of course, the screen popped up with the expected question. Do you wish to learn this? Why? And this made Issei pause. Up until now, he had been able to read the difficulty level increasing by the amount of assistance that the gamer ability was giving him in the form of skill books and armor. This particular combination of a helmet and a defensive magic skill book was ringing alarm bells in his mind. Definitely got to learn this. He thought worriedly, also got to be careful if the thinks that this place warranted such a big increase in defense when the last place had huge ogres that could crush a human's skull like an egg. Hitting yes, he watched as the book exploded into blue light and was absorbed into his body. Congratulations, you have learned. To put it basically, there are three categories of magic in combat. Offensive magic, which is used to attack. Defensive magic, which is used to protect oneself or allies and supplementary magic, into which all spell which do not fall under the first two categories fall. Whether it be protection against status effects, actual protection of the body or against specific type of attack, the magic of this skill can protect against it. Grants access to Tier 0 and Tier 1 spells. Spell unlocked. The Tier 1 spell has been unlocked. Spell unlocked. The Tier 0 spell has been unlocked. Spell unlocked. The Tier 1 spell has been unlocked. A basic unidirectional shield that can block mundane and magical attacks. It has limited durability, so it can be overwhelmed given enough time. Initially, you are only able to protect yourself with this shield, but experienced users can use it to protect others. Durability, 50. Colors, red and green. Target, self. 20 MP to activate, 5 MP per minute to maintain. A technique developed long in the past by combat mages in Greece to increase their soldiers' defense by hardening their skin to the consistency of bronze. It is a neglected spell nowadays due to the numerous techniques that have supplanted it. Nevertheless, it is a useful spell within its own limited sphere. Range, self, hardens skin to that of bronze while reducing movement speed. While active, all skin has an armor rating of 5. While active, movement is reduced by 5%. While active, increases the damage dealt B by 5. 15 MP to activate, 8 MP per minute to remain active. Vulnerable to extended exposure to extreme heat. 
a spell that affects all allied units within a certain radius of the user. It reduces the force of any physical attacks or weapons by a certain amount. Highly useful when you are opposing modern firearms. Affects all allied units within 1 meter. Reduces the physical force of any attacks against affected units by 10%, which in turn reduces the amount of damage dealt by the attacks. 10 MP to activate, then 6 MP per minute per person to maintain. Not exactly what I had in mind, but it'll do. Issei muttered as he placed the helmet on his head and drew the hood over it. Picking his swords up again, he moved around the chest and started up the stairs carefully. He would have to find a way to raise his MP by quite a bit to use the spells he knew effectively. At the moment, using his defensive spells alone would drain him dry of MP in just over a minute if you included the initial MP used to activate set skills. At the top of the stairs, there was a square entry room with nothing in it that had one door leading out of it. Nailed onto the top of it was a sign written in very crude English. Human thinks, enter plus die die, UHV bin WRnet. Issei read with a grimace. Even he had better English writing skills than that and he was at the dead middle of the class. He muttered as he opened the door and stepped through cautiously. No sooner had the red and green circular barrier flickered into place than a loud echoed and a green missile slammed into the energy shield, cracking it. Crap. Issei cursed, cancelling the shield and dodging behind a stone pillar just in time to avoid another bullet. Peering around the corner, he spotted a pair of ratmen furiously reloading a pair of crudely built long-muzzled guns while another pair stood in front of them holding a pair of triangular shields. What the heck kind of weird guns are they? Issei thought before he ducked behind the pillar again as the muzzles of the weapons were pointed at him again. Ratman Jezilier LV-10 Ratman Shielder LV-10 A Jezail What the heck was one of those things when they were at home? Obviously some kind of one shotgun. But when had the Ratmen gotten their hands on guns? The shielder was acting as both protection and as a platform for the Jezail wielder. As the rifle was too long and unwieldy for the Ratmen to aim properly without something to lean the body of the weapon on. So the thing to do was to eliminate them first. The problem was, his list of long-range attacks were very limited. He could use, but the damage would be minimal and he only had about five knives left in his inventory. Other than that, the only skill he had that was usable here was the spell. Issei winced as two more bullets slammed into the pillar he was hiding behind and started counting in his head. He stopped when another pair of bullets slammed into his hiding place. About 40 seconds. That should be long enough for me to go out, blast one of the shielders and then get under cover again. The Sekiryude thought, I'll move when they both fire again. When the two Jezils barked their payloads again, Issei moved fast. He pulled his hood down, leapt out and pointed a sword at the shield user on the right. Earth shot. In front of him, a large lump of earth appeared and formed into a bullet shape before hurtling at the target, smashing through the shield and removing the head of the ratman that held it. The nerveless corpse thudded to the floor along with the broken shield it had supported. You have slain a ratman shielder. You gain 130 XP. You have inflicted the cumbersome status on a ratman jezilier. Dodging to the pillar on the other side just in time to dodge the panic shot from the other jezail, Issei grinned. That took care of one of them. He reached out to the window and tapped the cumbersome status to see what it did. Cumbersome passive. Someone inflicted with this status has been overweighed with equipment or an oversized weapon, resulting in movement being reduced by 40%, and accuracy reduced by 30% due to the weight of the weapon. Armor. Considering that the accuracy of the Ratman mustn't be all that high to begin with, that meant that one of the Jezails might as well be shooting blanks. He could handle the remaining one alone. Lesser barrier shield. Issei snarled as he came out from cover. The shield materialized again, intercepting the bullet from the one remaining Jezail user that had a shielder. The other one shot wide. Rushing forwards, he sent another earth shot at the shielder, killing it. As the two gun-wielding ratmen panicked, Issei got in amongst them, disemboweling the one on the right and beheading the one on the left. You have slain a ratman shielder. You earn 130 EXP. You have slain X2 ratman Jezailiers. You earn 300 EXP. Do you wish to loot the bodies, including the one slain prior to the above? Yes, no. Hitting yes, Issei watched as the list formed up. X2 Warplock Jezails. X2 Magiscopes. X2 Shattered Triangular Pavis. X4 Ragged Leather Tunics. X2 Lesser MP Potions. X1 Skill Book Unknown Skill. 758 Yen. Considering he'd seen the familiar shine of Warp Stone on the Jezails, Issei didn't want anything to do with them. He marked the Jezails, the useless shields and the tunics for sale, earning him another 2,367 yen. Then he pulled one of the MP potions out of his inventory and observed it. Lesser MP potion. 
a common potion used by apprentice-level magicians and other magic users. While weak, it is commonly used due to the fact it can be created by even a beginner potioner. Rarity, very common. Restores 150 MP when drunk. When he drunk it, Issei almost spat it out. It tasted like concentrated wasabi and miso. It did work though, filling his MP back up to a full tank again in an instant. Then he turned his attention to the skill book, aware that he could only acquire one more skill from a skill book today. You have acquired the Tier 1 Earth Magic, Small Pit of Spikes skill book. Do you wish to learn this? Yes, no. At this point in time, no. Hitting no, he stowed the book into his inventory before having a look around the passage he was in. It was fairly narrow, with four pillars set into the walls at intervals. It being narrow would prevent enemies from jinking around to throw off the aim of the Jezails, but that advantage was negated by the pillars acting as ready-made cover. You receive plus one INT for a well-thought-out deduction. Shut up. Issei then had a look at the magiscopes. They were why he had been attacked even with his cloak fully deployed, as they granted the skills mage sight and awareness amplification to anyone who looked through them. If all the Jezails had those things, this would be a pain in the ass dungeon to clear. Flipping his hood on again nevertheless, Issei moved forwards cautiously. The doorway into the next room was open and this made him suspicious. Peeking into the next room, he spotted his next opponents, four of them. Organized into teams of two, they each carried a weapon between them. One was clearly a flamethrower of some kind, demonstrated by the fact the one carrying the business end unleashed it at a giant rat, green flames engulfing the hapless rodent, leaving only a charred skeleton behind. The other ratman carried a large wooden tank on its back, which presumably held the fuel for the weapon, and was connected by a heavily patched leather hose to the rear of the flamethrower. The other weapon was a goddamn mini gatling gun, not something that Issei wanted to play chicken with. The other rat seemed to be responsible for operating the cooling system or something. The two teams were walking around in a circular room with a central pillar and no other obstacles to prevent a certain Sekiryute from getting burned to a crisp or ventilated with bullets. Brute force wouldn't help him here, Issei would have to use his mind to fight here. His new magic, Force Absorption Field, was only level 1 and wouldn't slow the bullets down by much. As a kid, he'd liked Superman and wondered how fast a speeding bullet really was. The answer had been informative. Nowadays, bullets from even 0.22 rimfire cartridge averaged between 370 and 460 meters per second and those were the slowest he had found other than shotgun shells 335-427 MPS. As this was a machine gun type, and a supernatural one at that, he guessed that the speed of the bullets would be quite a bit faster than that. No way did he want to get in the way of those bullets. That left the flamethrower. If he could get in close and cut the fuel line before retreating, he'd eliminate the effectiveness of the weapon to a small belch of flames before becoming dead weight. On the other hand, he didn't want to get burned by that stuff either, and he was quite fond of the rapscallion wave blade, so he'd use the plain steel short sword for that, just in case the raw fuel of the flamethrower is corrosive as well as flammable mine made up, he checked one more time, this time for levels and to see if they had any magiscopes that could spot him in his cloak. Ratman fired him, warp fire thrower LV-13. Burning hell, Ratman fired him, rattling gun LV-13. Destructive impulse, pretty high levels, definitely not trash mobs, Issei thought as he looked them over. They also didn't have any sights mounted on their weapons or false eyes or eyepieces, so he guessed that the coast was clear. Stepping softly, he made his way through the door and waited for the warp fire thrower to pass by him. It was a rather agonizing wait, but it paid off. As the team passed by him, he quickly flipped his hood off, slammed the steel short sword through the hose connecting the two parts of the equipment, and then stabbed the ratman holding the weapon part of the oversized flamethrower in the back of the head, dropping it with a screech of pain as it died. He turned and stabbed the flailing tank carrier in the throat before pulling his hood up and dodging away to the pillar's shadow. You have slain ratman fired him, warp fire thrower. You gain 330 EXP. The rattling gun team rounded the pillar just as he did so, squeaking and whining before chattering at each other in what must have been their own language before the lead ratman pointed the muzzle of the rattling gun at the corpses of the warp fire thrower team and turned a crank, unleashing a storm of lead that perforated the bodies and ground like Swiss cheese. One round must have ignited the fuel tank as it exploded, unleashing a massive gout of eerie green flames and an explosion that Issei could feel even from the pillar he was up against. Better take them out before the lead idiot decides to spray the rest of the room. Issei thought as he flipped down his hood. Aloud, he said, Earth shot. The missile smashed into the body of the ratman holding the weapon, crushing the arm that turned the crank and making it screech in agony. Ratman rattling gun team A, left arm crippled. 
having neutralized the ability of the rattling gun to actually fire. Issei charged in and ended the fight with two more slashes, one decapitating the wielder of the weapon, the other hitting the heart of the other one. You have slain Ratman fired him, rattling gun. You gain 335 EXP. You have leveled up. LV7 LV8. You have 5 attribute points to spend. Basic swordsmanship has leveled up. LV2 LV3. Lesser Draconic Charisma has leveled up. LV2 LV3. Ambidextrous has leveled up. LV1 LV2. Earthshot has leveled up. LV1 LV2. As a result of repeated actions, you have learned the ambushing skill. Ambushing passive. Active LV1 0. XP. The ability to conceal oneself and attack from within that cover is a classic military tactic. Ambushing is well known to have been a major part of most wars down through the ages. There was even a case of two armies ambushing one another simultaneously without knowing about it. The more skilled you are at this skill, the more damaging your actions against the enemy will be after employing it against them. Passively grants plus 10 to the effects of all stealth-related skills. Actively increases all damage dealt by the user for one minute after leaving stealth by plus 10%. As a result of repeated actions, you have learned the disengage skill. Disengage passive LV1.00 EXP. A skilled soldier will know when to attack. A very skilled soldier will know when to attack and when to retreat. A masterful soldier knows both of these and has the ability to enact them. Passively raises the chance of successfully disengaging from active combat with enemies by 5%. Do you wish to loot the bodies? Due to damage done to the warp fire thrower team, these bodies cannot be looted. Yes, no. Hitting yes, Issei impatiently waited for the list to load, then sold all of it. He wanted none of that warpstone crap near him and was looking for a way to get rid of the two warpstone eyes that he had already. His earnings were 658 yen from the rattling gun and a further 1,507 yen from selling the rest of the stuff. Moving to the other side of the pillar, Issei frowned at the large set of steel double doors, then deepened his frown when he spotted the rectangular lock at chest height. A puzzle lock, in the form of a picture, five animal cutout blocks set up in a cross, with the four cardinal directions noted. In the south was a picture of a blue dragon, to the west was a red bird, to the north a white tiger, to the east a black turtle and in the center was a yellow dragon. Beneath the picture was a single sentence, restore the guardians to their proper places and protect the ancient capital. Issei frowned. The modern capital of Japan was Tokyo, formerly Edo, and had been since the end of the Warring States period 400 years previously, so the riddle must refer to Kyoto. The five animals were obviously the animal gods that protected cities, Seryu, Suzaku, Bayako, Genbu and Koryu. He dimly remembered that Koryu, the yellow dragon, was the guardian of the center, so that one was right. Strictly speaking not one of the Japanese elements as it represented Earth, but was commonly compared to an Oryu, so often included. The question is the other four. He muttered, squinting at the pictures. He dimly remembered an anime or two that featured the four animal gods. That was based on the Chinese elements though. Well, screw it. He decided. Reaching out, he removed the four pictures and placed them back in the order that had been popularized in the anime. Seryu in the east, Suzaku to the south, Bayako in the west and Genbu in the north. As he pressed the cutout block with Genbu on it in place, the lock started making noises, like that of gears turning. Issei stepped back cautiously as the box sank into metal housing before the doors creaked open inwardly, darkness hiding the room within. And that really builds up my confidence. The Sekiryude muttered uneasily. He perked up as another window popped up. As a result of a specific action, you have gained the skill Puzzle Solving. Puzzle Solving Passive LV1.00 EXP Puzzles, riddles, tricks and traps are the enemy of any dungeon explorer aside from the monsters that dwell within the dungeons. While traps aren't covered, puzzles, tricks and riddles should be easier to solve with this skill. Any mystery devised by mortal minds can be solved therein. Passively adds 5 to wise. Passively raises the chance of solving a puzzle by 10%. Passively raises the chance of solving a riddle by 10%. Passively raises the chance of solving a trick item by 10%. Useful, Issei commented before squaring his shoulders and walking through the doorway, the doors clanging shut behind him. As soon as they did, torches mounted on the walls started to catch a fire, more eerie green flames dimly illuminating a corridor that was sloping upwards, with roughly hewn pillars spaced evenly along the walls. For some reason, he had a bad feeling about this, so he walked softly near the wall to his right and strained his eyes to try and spot any enemies that would appear ahead of him. He paused after about five minutes when he heard a rattling noise coming from up ahead. Peering up, Issei's eyes widened before he dived to take cover behind a pillar. 
just in time, as a massive rattling wheel with several rat men inside it sped past, rolling over where Issei had been just a short moment ago. Did I just barely avoid getting run over by the world's biggest hamster wheel? Issei forced himself to ask aloud, as if to confirm the absurdity he had just witnessed. There was the supernatural, and then there was the plain weird. Advancing up the path again, Issei dodged two more supersized rat wheels that tried to crush him. It was actually fairly easy to avoid them, as the loud rattling sound they made as they trundled down the sloping corridor was very obvious. Eventually, he made it to the top and peered around. Seeing no sign of any more wheels of doom, he advanced into the room ahead and stopped. Ten clan rats stood guard in the room, armed with crude spears and shields. Careful examination of the room showed that there was no sign of any other traps or hidden guns in the room, nor were there any large areas that were hidden by boxes or furniture. In other words, an area he could cut loose in. Clan rat LV-10 Hired help Clan rat claw leader VR Arkin LV-12 Squad leader Interesting. So one of them was stronger than the others and was the leader. Based on the actions of the Ratmen in the past, the leader would send the others to fight Issa first before reluctantly fighting himself. Deciding to take advantage of his new ambushing skill, Issa carefully maneuvered himself around the seemingly randomly patrolling Ratmen until he was behind two who were chittering to each other in that odd language of theirs. He flipped down his hood and attacked, beheading one of the Ratmen and seriously wounding another. The wounded Ratman screeched in agonized fury, alerting the rest of the rats to Issei's location. You have slain a clan rat. You earn 125 EXP. Van Thing. Kill Kill. VRR Kin ordered. Unlike the rest of the clan rats, he was equipped with a serrated sword that dripped a foul-looking black ooze to the ground. Issei resolved to not get cut by it. Evading a spear thrust, the Sekiryude swiped the wounded clan rat with his rapscallion wave blade, finishing it off before chopping at a spear that came at him from the other side. Fighting against polearm weapons like this was seriously hard. He had to dodge or block every single blow with his swords or arm guards to reduce the damage he took from the blows to less than 10 HP pet hit, which left him with few chances to attack. He did manage to make the occasional attack though, thanks to his longer arms and height, and the numbers of clan rats thinned. Once the last one fell, Issei was down 70 HP and facing the leader of the squad of ratmen, VR Arkin. Now that Issei had the chance to look at him closer, he wished he hadn't. His eyes were red and froth was spilling out of his ravening maw as he cackled. Man thing foolish. You should have killed VR Arkin when you had the chance. The ratman sneered, now you shall die on the sword eater. That name is lame. Issei deadpanned. With a shriek, the ratman lashed out with his sword, forcing Issei to parry it with his steel sword. He was glad he had done that with the ordinary sword rather than the rapscallion wave blade as the muck that VR Arkin's sword excreted started eating into the blade, rusting it. Crap, was all Issei could think as he dodged and blocked with his rusting sword. He had to do something here. He couldn't lose his swords like this. Just then he remembered something from when his father had the plumbers in a year ago. Copper doesn't rust, it oxidizes. If the only thing that sword did was make swords made of iron or an iron alloy rust, it should have no effect on his copper or bronze swords. Observe. He hissed as he glared at the sword that was causing the problem. Sword Eater. A sword forged from the blood of five true innocents and inspelled with curses against iron. It is the bane of any sword forged of iron or an iron alloy, and will rust it into nothing over an extended period of time. Standard Sword Ratman. Short Sword. Slashing Damage, S plus 17. Piercing Damage, S plus 20. Special Effects, Iron Corrosion, Iron Alloy Corrosion. A very effective sword indeed. One might even go so far as to call it a counter sword in modern times due to all swords, other than ceremonial swords, being forged of steel. Fortunately, Issei had a few tricks up his sleeve. Disengaging slightly, he threw his steel sword into his inventory and drew out a bronze sword that he then used to block VR Arkin's next slash with Sword Eater. The surprise in the Ratman's eyes when the bronze blade didn't start to rust was priceless. Now then, where were we? Issei snarled, pushing VR Arkin back. He stabbed the Ratman in the leg with the Rapscallion Wave Blade before drawing back quickly so the rusting sword couldn't be employed against it. It didn't really take long after that. With his trump card neutralized, it took only a few minutes for VR Arkin to fall, much to Issei's relief. You have slain X8 clan rats. You earn 1000 EXP. You have slain VR Arkin, clan rat claw leader. You earn 200 EXP. Sword mastery has leveled up. LV2 LV3. Lesser draconic charisma has leveled up. LV3 LV4. As a result of repeated actions, you have learned the evasion skill. Evasion passive LV1.00 EXP. 
the ability to quickly move out of the way of attacks, sometimes called dodging. It is nevertheless a valuable skill for a fighter of any stripe. Passively raises the chance of avoiding ranged attacks by 10%. Passively raises the chance of avoiding close combat attacks by 12%. Issei nodded. That was some good skill leveling there. Surprisingly, Lesser Draconic Charisma leveled up as well. Was he being charismatic as he fought as well? He looted the bodies and was pleasantly surprised by what he found. X9 Average Ratman Spears X1 Sword Eater X9 Boiled Leather Armor X1 Leather Jerkin 1053 Yen X1 Rujin Menpo X1 Skill Book Unknown Skill Other than the Sword Eater, the Menpo and Skill Book were the only things that interested him, but he kept the spears just in case. He did sell the leather items, which earned him another 500 yen. Then he turned his attention to the other items. The Rujin Menpo was red, just like his helmet, and had a snarling dragon's face on it, complete with bared fangs and glaring eyes. He used Observe on it. Rujin Menpo, a face mask cast in the image of the dragon god of Japanese myth and legend. Made from blood metal, it enhances the power of any offensive draconic ability the wearer possesses, as well as slightly enhancing the wearer's physical abilities and protecting the wearer's face. Provides an armor rating of 5 to the wearer's face. Can only be worn with a Kabuto-style helmet. Increases the effect of all draconic offensive abilities by plus 5. Increases the user's STR, sta and dex by 2 each. Carefully, Issei put it on and blinked. He could see through the mask as if it was transparent which was a relief. The reason he had been somewhat hesitant about wearing a mask was the possible loss of his peripheral vision, so this was a welcome revelation. Then he turned his attention to the skill book. You have acquired the magic weapon reinforcement skill book. Do you wish to learn this? Yes, no. Sounds like a good idea. Meh, might as well. Issei thought as he hit the yes button. Congratulations. You have learned the magic weapon reinforcement skill. Magic weapon reinforcement active LV1. 0. 0.00, a skill that almost every supernatural race that wields both magic and weapons at once learns, although the name and method differ slightly from race to race. The basic idea is to coat the user's weapons in magical energy to increase both the durability of the weapon and its attack power. For weapons with an edge, it also enhances the cutting and piercing power of the blade in addition to the regular power boost. Actively adds plus 10 to all weapons damage, regardless of type actively adds plus 10 to the durability of the weapon. In the case of bladed weapons, their piercing and slashing damage is increased by 10. Costs 15 MP to activate, then another 10 MP for every minute after that to maintain it. The skill can be forcibly deactivated by a strong enough blow. Okay, this is a good skill. Issei grinned, now then, let's get out of this place. The only way out of the room was the door on the opposite side to where he had entered, so Issei kicked it open and advanced into a long corridor that gently sloped up. Another game of dodge the doom wheels. He grumbled as he started up the path. As expected, the familiar rumbling sound of the wheel contraption came after a few minutes of climbing. Issei dodged to the side and barely avoided it. This corridor was narrower than the last one, so it passed less than an inch from his body. It reeked of rot and excrement, almost enough to make Issei throw up. Gross, was all he could choke out as he fought down the impulse to vomit. Dodging two more wheels, Issei made it to the top and was confronted by a large barred gate that led into what looked like another arena. Yippee, another arena trap. The Sekiryude grumbled sarcastically. He reached out and touched the gate and a window popped up. Please unequip all weapons before entering. You have got to be kidding. Issei muttered in disbelief. Reluctantly, he placed both of his swords into the inventory and resolved to draw them as fast as he could when the boss appeared. When he touched the gate again, it sank into the ground smoothly, allowing him entrance. The arena he walked into was similar to Farsqueaker's arena, except bigger and less rustic. The way into the audience was blocked by a shimmering force field and standing in a viewing box was a ratman. Unlike Byral and Farsqueaker, this one was small, no higher than the middle of Issei's thigh. Swathed in robes, it was nevertheless obvious that this ratman had mechanical replacements for some of his limbs. The right arm was some kind of baroque weapon. The tail was merely implanted with a spike on the end of it and there was a bulky mechanical eye replacing the creature's original left eye. So dot 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 this is the man thing that slew that musclehead Byral Warfing and that fat fool farsqueaker, the ratman said as he flicked a switch with one clawed finger. The rattle of the gate rising up behind him made Issei sigh. Another arena trap indeed. That would be me, he replied, crossing his arms, and you are. Teakqueak, master warplock engineer, the ratman replied, and this arena, warrior, is your graveyard. What is going on here? A familiar voice shouted from behind Issei. He turned around to see Ria's Gremory and the occult research club arrayed around her. 
TCH. Devil Things. Teak Squeak Grumbled. Kill Kill Later. Red Warrior First. Eris Gremory, We Meet Again. Issei said with a nod. Thankfully, his voice disguising pendant was still working. What is all this? Why are you killing these creatures? The red-headed devil demanded. Because they must die if I am to live. Issei replied shortly. Turning around to face Teak Squeak again, the masters of the Ratman seek the death of all supernatural beings, including humans with magic owl or spiritual powers. Yes, yes. The Warplock engineer agreed. Now Red Warrior must die die. That's what Viral Warfang and Far Squeaker said as well. Issei snarked back, pointing at the Ratman. I killed Warfang and took his own sword from him as a prize, using it to kill Far Squeaker and his pet monster as well. Ah oh yes, Bone Ripper, Teak Squeak purred silkily. He wishes to say hello to you, Red Warrior. The Ratman flipped another switch and the large doors on one side of the arena yawed open, revealing a monstrosity that was only vaguely familiar to Issei. Bone Ripper, he breathes. The Rat Ogre that Issei had killed was now walking once again, but as a larger monstrosity than he had been. The flesh on its head was gone, leaving only a bare skull, its lifeless eye sockets full of blazing green fire. The tail that Issei had severed was replaced by a long, sinuous length of metal that left scars on the arena floor as it advanced, and the arm that had been cut off as well had been replaced by two arms, one equipped with a set of razor-sharp talons and the other with what Issei recognized as a miniature warp fire thrower. Bone Ripper revived LV-12. Experiment DFR 455-12 there were horrified exclamations coming from the orc behind him that he tried to ignore. What dot 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 is that thing? D feels wrong. My my. Looks like I have quite the workload ahead of me. Issei sighed. He noticed a window pop up ahead of him. Quest alert. Keep this under your hat. You face a powerful foe, in full view of Rhea's Gremory and her peerage. Win this fight without using the power of the boosted gear, keeping your identity a secret. Quest reward, x2 levels added to boost. Skill, level up, random piece of armor, 2000 EXP. Quest failure, Rhea's Gremory discovers your secret identity. Will you accept this quest? Yes, no. Hastily hitting yes, Issei reached into the inventory, one hand on either side of him and drew out the Rapscallion Wave Blade and the Steel Short Sword. Well then, Bone Ripper, he said, pointing his wave blade at the monstrosity. I killed you once, let's see if I can go two for two. With Rias, Kaniko chan break these bars down. The Gremory heiress ordered. She wasn't going to just stand back and let this boy get killed in front of her. The reincarnated Nekamata nodded, drew back one clenched fist and punched the bars, causing a barrier to appear between her fist and the bars before the petite girl was thrown back, looking frazzled. Electric barrier. Can't break it. Kaniko reported. Akino, Riaz said tersely. The former Nephilim studied the barrier for a moment before shaking her head. I have never seen a barrier like this before, but you. It isn't yakai, devil, human or fallen, and it certainly isn't a holy barrier of the churches. I wouldn't even begin to guess how to go about unlocking it. I'll give it a go then, Riaz said with a frown. She called upon her power of destruction and formed the magic circle of the Gremory before her, firing a strong blast of it at the barrier. One of the most feared and powerful magics in all of Devilkind struck the barrier, struggled against it for a long moment, and then fizzled out as if it were just a firework. What the? This had never happened to her before. Sure, her magic was a pale shadow of what her mother and brothers, but it was less like the magic was negated or blocked and more like it had been. Erased. She was distracted by the monstrosity. Bone Ripper. The two in the other chamber had called it roaring as it loped forward with deceptive slowness at the red-cloaked warrior. The boy she was certain it was a male stood in a relaxed stance, awaiting his enemy to come within striking distance. With another roar, the monster swiped at the warrior with its remaining original upper limb at lightning speed, much faster than one would believe from a creature of such bulk. The warrior leapt back and lashed out with his swords, scoring a long pair of wounds down the appendage. What was odd was that only a small trickle of black liquid emerged from the wounds. I see, the warrior said in that flat and emotionless voice. You didn't revive Bone Ripper, you reanimated it as a flesh puppet of sorts. A flesh golem would be the more appropriate term, I believe. Yes, yes, the ratman sitting above the arena chittered. Much better now it has no mind, all the better to control it. Warpstone core and warp fire thrower means you are dead, man thing. Alternatively, it means that it relies on being controlled from somewhere else. The warrior pointed out as Bone Ripper slowly withdrew its claw, meaning that it takes a while for the orders to be issued. With that, the dual-wielding human charged in and started to slice away at the body of the beast, leaving behind long scores down its flank. He leapt away when the long tail lashed out at him in return, gouging out a long chunk of stone from the ground where he had been standing. 
Yudo, can sword birth bypass the barrier to help that boy? Riaz asked. There was no way the warrior was going to defeat that monster with just two ordinary steel swords. The blonde boy concentrated before rubbing his temples. Sorry but you. Looks like this barrier blocks the effects of sacred gears trying to materialize inside it from outside. It was not often that Ria's Gremory felt powerless in any situation. Before this, the only situation she had been helpless in was that ridiculous engagement her father had forced on her with that sleazeball, Riser Phoenix. She was still all but powerless to do anything about it, and this situation was making her more frustrated. All she could do was watch and ponder on the warrior's words from before the fight started. Destroy all supernaturals dot 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 that must be a joke. She thought, that implies that ordinary humans who wish to do it, which is impossible. To any supernatural, even human magicians, that was the logic. The non-magical portion of humanity might have their guns and the like. But with the fact that the supernaturals had their own hidey holes to flee to in case of an emergency, plus the fact that they had abilities that far surpassed that of regular humans, there wasn't much that could be done to them. Unless it was a completely sudden surprise attack. Rhea's mind and her blood stopped cold. Before this human started trashing the lairs of these ratmen, both she and Sona had been completely in the dark about the existence of them. Had they had more time to prepare, the ratmen would have swarmed over their peerages when they were most vulnerable, in their homes, separated and split apart from one another. If there were other ratmen nests in other places where there were devils, she made a note to inform her brother about the possibility before returning her attention to the fight. Back with Issei, as Issei dodged another lashing from the zombie rat ogre's whip tail. He wondered when things had started going down the toilet. A rat ogre he could deal with. An enhanced rat ogre, sure it was tough, but manageable. A flesh golem rat ogre though. When he had used Observe on Bone Ripper 2.0, this was what he'd seen. Name, Bone Ripper Revived. Title, Experiment DFR 455-12. Species, Flesh Golem Former Enhanced Rat Ogre. HP, 1972,000th. MP, 0 divided by 0. STR, 75 plus 25. STA, 100 plus 25. DEX, 60 plus 25. INT, 1 minus 11. WISE, 0. LUCK, 0. SPECIAL STATUS, FEEL NO PAIN IS IMMUNE TO ANY AND ALL FORMS OF PAIN. Order me cannot move without orders from its controller. Leather skin skin naturally thick and tough, providing plus 15 armor against bladed weapons. He was pretty certain that the leather skin part was a result of experiments by the Warplock engineer. Ditto for the order me and feel no pain bits. What was with the ridiculously high strength and stamina? Hold on dot 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 you have a way to up your attacks, dumbass. Issei thought, feeling like an idiot. He muttered, magic weapon enhancement. Red light wrapped around his swords and he grinned. Blocking the swipe of another claw with the steel sword, he slammed the blade of his other sword down on the wrist section, cutting right through it, which unleashed a large gout of black blood. You have severed a limb from Bone Ripper. Due to his status as a flesh golem, he does not suffer from any bleeding effects. Oh come on, he's bleeding right there. Ignoring his complaint, Bone Ripper lashed out again with his tail, forcing Issei to dodge. He disengaged the flow of magic to his weapons and tried a different tact. Earth shot. The earth bullet slammed into the skull of Bone Ripper, shattering it into pieces. Bone Ripper has lost its head. As it is a flesh golem, it has no effect. Okay, fine. Looks like I'm going to have to chop you into pieces to put a stop to you. Issei grunted in annoyance. Once more activating magic weapon enhancement, he charged forward. Unleashing a silent roar that shook the arena to its foundations, the flesh golem thrust its warp fire thrower in his direction, a fearful green light appearing in the muzzle. Lesser barrier shield. Issei gasped out, raising the magic shield just in time to block the outrush of emerald green flames that erupted from the small flamethrower. He paled as cracks appeared over the shield and hastily threw up a second barrier behind the first. The first barrier shattered as its durability was lowered to zero, and the durability of the second fell quickly, but held out long enough for the flames to die down. Dismissing the shield, Issei noticed that a port in the warp fire thrower opened up and ejected a cartridge of some sort. A cartridge system flamethrower. How did they? Ah, of course. Magical compression. Moving into the attack, Issei slammed his glowing swords into Bone Ripper and drew them out diagonally, leaving huge rents in the dead flesh of the former rat ogre's chest. What are you fools doing? Kill him, Teak Squeak demanded, presumably into a communications device of some sort. Looks like the fact that the warp fire thrower didn't kill him worried the ratman. Good. After he sliced some more flesh from the flesh golem's chest, a large patch fell off, revealing a large glowing green sphere that pulsed like a heart. It was clearly made of warp stone and Issei retreated swiftly. 
He didn't want to be near that thing. Fools, fools. He's exposed the golem core. The warplock engineer shrieked, kill him now. Earth shot. Issa snarled, earth shot. The two earthen bullets slammed into the core one after another, the first causing a small crack in the core, while the second widened it considerably. Critical hit. Bone Ripper staggered back and started twitching spasmodically, its limbs completely out of control. What do you mean it isn't responding? Teak Squeak roared, control it and kill the man thing immediately. Using this time to reach into his inventory, Issei grabbed the last MP potion and chugged it down, restoring his reserves. Throwing the bottle to one side, he fired two more earth shots at the core, the last one shattering it into pieces. The pieces started to glow a frighteningly bright color of green and Issei instinctively threw up a barrier as the fragments of warp stone exploded. The wave of energy released by the explosion was blocked by the barrier before dispersing. Bone Ripper, ripped asunder by the explosion, collapsed to the ground, well and truly dead. The Ratman sitting in the box, knocked off his pedestal of arrogance and superiority, gaped at the remains of his flesh golem before glaring at Issei, his artificial eye blazing red with his rage. Phew, Teak Squeak growled from his box, you will pay for this humiliation. Not today, but you will pay for it. With that, the Warplock engineer turned and left the box, vanishing into the darkness away from the braziers that lit the arena. That's a first. Issei commented in surprise. Both Byral and Farsqueaker had come to challenge him after overcoming their guards and challenges. Could this be the often heard of Nemesis appearance portion of RPGs? Ignoring the windows around him, he turned around to look at Rhea's gremory and her dot 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 what had the gamer called them? Her peerage. All of them looked astonished. I would advise that once I am gone, you not touch any remaining fragments of warp stone that remain. He informed her gruffly, they are both toxic and have a mutagenic effect on people and their minds. Take some to study, if you must, but do not touch any of them with your bare hands or breathe in any dust. I must bid you farewell again, Eris Gremory. Wait, Rhea's voice was unusually hesitant, I must. Apologize to you for how I acted when last we spoke. I had just received some bad news and was in a bit of a temper as a result. I had no right to take it out on you. This A paused. Apology accepted. I took no offense to it. But it was quite a surprise to discover that there are devils in QO. I am human and had no idea about the supernatural before a short time ago. And at the moment, my attention is consumed by eliminating these ratmen. We will speak again once they have been removed from the board. With that, he left using the large doors Bone Ripper had entered, the heavy steel doors clanging shut behind him. Then he checked the message windows that had been popping up since Bone Ripper died. Quest complete. Keep this under your hat. Complete. You successfully defeated the Flesh Golem Bone Ripper revived without summoning your boosted gear, keeping your identity as this generation's Sekiryude a secret from Rhea's Gremory and her peerage. Quest reward, X2 levels added to boost. Skill, level up, Blood Metal Greaves, 2000 EXP. You have leveled up. LV9 LV10. You have 5 attribute points to spend. Boost, skill has leveled up. LV2 LV4. You have defeated Bone Ripper revived. You gain 1350 EXP. Earth Magic skill has leveled up. LV1 LV2. Earth Shot skill has leveled up. LV2 LV3. Defensive Magic skill has leveled up. LV1 LV2. Lesser Barrier Shield skill has leveled up. LV1 LV2. Evade skill has leveled up. LV1 LV2. Ambidextrous skill has leveled up. LV2 LV3. Issei had to whistle at that. Fighting against a boss monster with level 1 skills was a really good way to level them up. He made a note to find a supply of knives so he could practice his knife throwing skill. Looking around the large pen where Bone Ripper had been kept, he spotted a ladder leading to a higher platform. So he climbed up it and followed it until he came to a stone door that slid aside at his touch. As expected, this led to a small room with a desk and a single letter sitting atop it. Issei grabbed it and had a look at it. To the head of Project Rat King. The council is duly impressed with the latest mutations and subspecies created by your project team. What we are concerned with, however, is the increasing sense of individuality and independence that the Ratmen are showing due to the influence of the experimental substance dubbed Warpstone by the Ratmen. The techno-sorcery that some individual Ratmen have been able to create using Warpstone as a base is a grave concern also, as it is not our intention to eliminate one set of supernaturals only to have a new set of our own creation rise up in their place. You are hereby given notice that a new project, Project Rat Poison, 
has been formed and you are directed to send all data on all existing ratmen to them at once. Please be assured that it is not the council's intent to blame you or your team for this series of events. It is understood that this was a spontaneous series of happenstances that could not be predicted on your part. However, from here on out, you are to cease all experimentation in creating new breeds of ratmen, effective immediately. You may train some for specialized roles, but no experimentation or splicing. The excess budget for experimentation is still yours to use for other aspects of the project. For the purity and sanctity of our souls. That's what you get for playing God. Issei muttered as he tucked the memo into his inventory. The way out was similar to the previous layers, so Issei just unequipped his combat loadout and cleaned himself off with cleansing before heading home, satisfied with his efforts for the day. Later, unknown location. Issei woke to find himself floating in an void that was filled with flames. This confused him as he last remembered dozing off in his bed after having dinner and a bath. Suddenly, a gigantic crimson red dragon emerged from the flames. The dragon was enormous, easily bigger than the entire grounds of Kuo Academy. Its scaled hide shimmered in the light of the flames and its eyes glowed bright emerald green. Unlike the green of the warp stone, however, the green light wasn't sickly or corrupt. Rather, it was empowering and regal. S. Sekiryude, Issei whispered in awe. Indeed, boomed the dragon in the same voice that the boosted gear used when announcing boost. Being used, except ten times louder, I am Drake, the Welsh dragon, the Crimson Dragon Emperor and one of the two heavenly dragons. I bid you greetings dot 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 my new partner. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through what if Issei had level up system with multiple boosted gears and had harem found it as intriguing and thought-provoking as we did. A big shout out to Seer King for crafting such a compelling story. Don't forget to check out their profile on fanfiction.net for more amazing works. The link is in the description below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to Quirky What If for more fascinating explorations into the world of fanfiction and fantasy. Your support helps us create more content like this, and we're always excited to hear your thoughts and suggestions in the comments section. See you guys in the next video.